Oklahoma was the only team that did not have a returning starter of the four coming into this year. And as you might expect, all four of these teams have had outstanding quarterback play this season. In the case of Murray, he followed up a Heisman Trophy winner in Baker Mayfield. And Oklahoma became the first school to have two different quarterbacks win the Heisman Trophy in back-to-back -back years. Yeah. Some people thought there'd be a drop-off uh, replacing Mayfield. It was just the opposite. The numbers went up with Kyler Murray. We knew he had great speed. He has quickness to elude pressure, but it was his throwing ability both from the pocket and outside of the pocket that really, I think, surprised a lot of people. The other three teams in this playoff had returning starters at quarterback, all of whom have been big winners, ultra successful, and all three of these teams, Todd, made changes at quarterback. Alabama, before the year began, went to Tua Tunga Bailoa. Ian Book, in week four, took over from Brandon Wimbush and Trevor Lawrence of Clemson, replaced Kelly Bryant. In all three cases, they wanted more production out of the passing game, and it happened. Yeah, they got it in both cases. Trevor Lawrence, great maturity from day one on campus. He has a special arm. In fact, when we talked to some of the Notre Dame players, they said some quarterbacks are game managers. This guy's a game changer, and so is Ian Book. When Ian Book took over in the Wake Forest game, he dramatically impacted the Notre Dame offense. Very accurate, 70% completion guy, and a slippery runner, and I think his running ability will be important tonight for Notre Dame. Speaking of running ability, another yeah. similarity between these two teams, each has a home run hitter at the yeah. running back position. Yeah, fun guys to watch. And sophomore Travis Etienne for Clemson, it's a lot of bang for your buck. This is a guy who ran for over 1,400 yards, a school record 21 touchdowns, but he only averaged carrying the ball 13 times a game. He's fresh all the way to the end of the football game. He's even stronger than he was a year ago, so he can break tackles, and that makes him even more dangerous to go for the goal line every time he touches it. Dexter Williams, he's the home run hitter for Notre Dame. Had to sit out the first four games for a suspension, but when he came back, he hit the ground running. He never looked back. He never slowed down. And his addition to the Notre Dame offense, just as important as Ian Book at quarterback. They were lacking a big playmaker in the run game. Williams, 117 and a half per game and 12 rushing touchdowns in those eight games. Total over 1,000 yards for the season today in all likelihood. Of course, the big story in the lead up to this game off the field, the suspension by the NCAA of three Clemson players for testing positive for a banned performance enhancing, uh, enhancing substance, Osterine, yeah. which I think very few of us had heard of prior to this week. <laughs> right. We heard a lot about it this week. But the most notable, the biggest player, literally by far, is Dexter Lawrence, the All-American defensive tackle. What does his absence mean? I think it's a huge absence. Now, Albert Huggins will take his place. Many think he'll be drafted, too. But Dexter Lawrence is a massive human being. And because of his size and strength, he completely disrupts your running game and can push the pocket from the inside. Huggins may have a big game, but they will miss Dexter Lawrence in the middle. They like their backups, as you said, particularly Huggins, but the Notre Dame folks, happy Lawrence is not in that lineup for sure. Notre Dame in the playoff for the first time. Fumbles the ball, the ball's out, and the Irish have it. Being bought. new starting quarterback for Notre Dame. Dexter Williams in for the first time of the season, and he has the ball. Touchdown, Dexter Williams. Close to the end zone. Touchdown, Notre Dame. Brad Kelly has gotten his Irish to 12 and 0. Yes, Notre Dame, there is a college football playoff, and you're in it. Ian Book and the Fighting Irish getting ready to take the field. Notre Dame, the first independent team to make the playoff in the five year history of the CFP. They are the tenth different team to make an appearance in the playoff. 12 and 0 as you saw the last time they were 12 and 0 the 2012 season when they lost to Alabama in a one-sided game in the BCS National Championship game a lot of people make them the big underdogs today Todd because they still have that game in mind they wonder how good Notre Dame really is Brian Kelly says this is the best team I've ever coached it's a different team and a much more prepared team to play in a game like this and as he told us, what happened six years ago has little to do with this year's playoff game. 
Back with more from Arlington right after this. Trevor Lawrence and the Clemson Tigers getting ready to take the field as Clemson makes its fourth straight appearance in the college football playoff. The ACC champions for the fourth year in a row. They won it all two years ago in a pulsating national championship win in Tampa against Alabama. Here's a look at the path to this year's playoff for Clemson. We had several guys that chose to stay. He could have probably gone pro if they'd wanted to. This is why Dabo Sweeney takes these down to get tested. His two-year starter, Kelly Bryant, is out and gone, and Trevor Lawrence is in. Your quarterback goes down. You have to run the football. That is a team that goes in and says, hey, we're going to win. Dean Higgins hauls it in near right corner. Touchdown! Clemson had that close call against Syracuse in the first game after they made the quarterback change. But since then, they have dominated, winning the last eight by an average of more than 20 points per game. All those wins by at least 20. An SEC officiating crew down on the field. Here's the referee, Matt Austin. The Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic is celebrating its 10th anniversary. Gentlemen, come on in, shake hands, introduce yourselves. Gentlemen, congratulations on being selected to play in this year's college football playoff. Joining us today for the coin toss are Mr. Carl Ice, chairman of the Goodyear Cotton Bowl, and, and presenting the coin is Mr. Jerry Jones, president of the Dallas Cowboys. The Cotton Bowl is honoring Jerry Jones today for celebrating 10 years here at AT&T Stadium. Mr. Jones, thank you very much. Today's coin is a commemorative coin. Each team's logo is represented. We have Clemson and Notre Dame. So there's no need to call the toss. I'll flip it. Whichever logo is showing, you'll have the first choice. Got it? Okay, here we go. And it is Clemson. You've won the toss. You want to defer to the second half. Notre Dame, you want the football? Okay, which way you want to kick it? Clemson over here, Notre Dame over there. Clemson has won the top. On the sidelines today, we have two of the great sports reporters in the country. On the Notre Dame sideline, here's Tom Rinaldi. Sean, thank you very much, Brian. So much focus on Dexter Lawrence being out for this game. How do you best take advantage of it right away on the offensive side? Well, I don't know if there's going to be a huge advantage there. He's, he's a really good football player, but we've got to run what we were going to run. We've got to balance things up. We're going to move the football on the perimeter a lot, and they've got really good football players across the board. So this is going to be a one-man show. Appreciate it. Good luck, Brian. Let's go across the Holly Row. Coach is too busy taking pictures with fans right now. Uh, we're going to try to corral them. Coach, um, last year in this semifinal, your only loss in four years, you said some of the guys didn't have the eye of the tiger. What did you see in that locker room right now and as they ran out onto this field? Do they have it? Oh, no question. These guys are ready to play. Uh, but, but your opponent has something to do with it, too. These guys are a great team. We're getting ready to, to take on over here. But we're excited. This is what it's all about. Worked all year for this moment. Now you just got to play and dominate this moment. All right. Thank you, Coach. You John, back to you. All right, Holly, thank you. Fourth meeting all time between Clemson and Notre Dame. The last one was a classic, October of 2015 at Clemson. The Tigers held on for a two-point win. 19-year-old Trevor Lawrence will wait as Clemson deferred, so B.T. Potter, with a big leg as a true freshman, 67 touchbacks and 100 kickoffs, will boot it away, and Chris Fink hopes he has a chance to return one. We're indoors in the home of the Dallas Cowboys on a chilly day outside with a temperature in the mid-40s in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. And the playoff is underway. 
think about three yards deep will take it in. And let's meet the Notre Dame quarterback. Ian Buck, six foot junior, El Dorado Hills, California. That's a suburb of Sacramento. Academically a junior, but in terms of football eligibility, he is a redshirt sophomore, and he has been a big difference maker. You know, he was a talented point guard in basketball in high school, and you can see that in how he plays quarterback. He distributes the football with accuracy and timing. Fourth most accurate quarterback in the country in the regular season. Here's Dexter Williams, and a great start for Notre Dame. An 11-yard run, Kendall Joseph, a linebacker, with the tackle for the Tigers. Right away, you see how Clemson likes to play defense. They're going to blitz linebackers that time. Trey Lamar, the middle linebacker, ran right by Dexter Williams in the backfield. Book is short set. We expect a lot of quick throws to slow down the Clemson rush. The completion to Alizé Mack. Here are the impact players brought to you by Chick-fil-A. And there was a flag on the play for a false start against Notre Dame. Williams with Miles Boykin, their leading receiver for the Notre Dame offense. Christian Wilkins, three-time All-American, the leader of the team at Clemson, and Cleland Furl, the defensive player of the year in the ACC, a great defensive end. He'll be a high first-round pick. Well, this team can really pressure the passer. Ian Book has to deliver the ball quickly in the passing game. Williams again trying to run left. Like the ball was sliding around. Notre Dame has lost only three fumbles all year. That would be the fewest in a season if it stays that way for the Irish. The previous mark is four. Well, that was Albert Huggins, the guy that we talked about that's in there for Dexter Lawrence. And the ball does come out before he hits the ground. And fortunately, it goes right back to Dexter Williams. Some early luck of the Irish. The penalty hurt Notre Dame, second and 15. Book is a slippery runner, to use Dabo Sweeney's word. Trayvon Mullen, a cornerback, chopped him down at the 36. It'll be third down and 10. That was a design quarterback draw. That was not a scramble. But again, his ability to leave the pocket and create positive yardage, it keeps the defense honest, particularly when it likes to rush the passer as well as Clemson. This is the situation Notre Dame wants to avoid as much as possible, though. Third and ten against this pass rush. It's a blitz-happy team, even with the great defensive front. Brent Venables, the coordinator, likes to bring extra rushes. Book lobs one, and it's dropped by Chase Claypool. He was right at the line to make and could not hang on. I think that was just the case, John, where Claypool was concerned about where his feet were, where the first yard and marker was, and just lost his concentration. It's a soft, catchable pass, and Claypool just lost concentration, concerned about his feet, and they have to punt the football. So here's the senior, Tyler Newsom, from the City of Dreams, he told us, Carrollton, Georgia, living his dream today. One of the Irish captains. Hangs it up high, and Amari Rogers calls for a fair catch. Newsom told us his goal was to hit it high at least 45 yards and no return, and that one was 51. Here's Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence, 6 5 freshman quarterback from Cartersville, Georgia. Trevor Lawrence just puts so much pressure on a defense because his arm is an NFL caliber arm right now. He can make the ball go where he wants it to go accurately anywhere on the field. So there's no weak spots in terms of defending him as a passer. Broke to Sean Watson's Clemson freshman records, fellow Georgian. One of the great players in the country. He gives it to Travis Etienne, the speedster, stuffed after a one-yard gain. Khalid Kareem, Tavon Coney among those in on the tackle. On this side of the ball, the Chick-fil-A impact players. T. Higgins has emerged, particularly in the red zone, Todd. Jerry Tillery also likely to be a first-round pick on the Notre Dame defensive line. Julian Love, one of the best corners in the country. One of the finalists, three of them, for the Thorpe Award, best defensive back. Won by DeAndre Baker of Georgia. The Notre Dame blitz on second and nine. Lawrence got away. 
and nearly completed it. Tried to get it to Garrett Williams, fullback, H-back, tight end, and it's incomplete. Well, Clemson went with an empty backfield, so there's only a certain number of guys, five, that can pressure. Notre Dame brought six. Julian O'Quara there to force the, the scramble. Drew Tranquil also coming on the blitz. And a third down and long situation. And this defensive line for Notre Dame is outstanding. Mm -hmm. The other one, Clemson, gets a lot of notoriety. This one's good. Dabo Sweeney said it's the best defense we will have faced this year. They have talent at all three levels of the defense. Third and nine for Clemson. Time for Trevor Lawrence. And on target for T. Higgins. Clemson fans thought he was being held by Troy Pride. There is no flag, and it'll be a Tigers punt. And that is a huge confidence builder for Troy Pride. Because Julian Love is so good, teams pick on Troy Pride. In his last game against USC, they went after him right away early, and that's a confidence boost to make a defensive play on the first throw his way on a third down. There is Will Spires to punt. Chris Fink back for it. And not a good kick. A little off the side of his foot and short. Well, and again, if there's an edge that Notre Dame has in the game, it has been in the special teams. They got a great punt. That's a poor punt. Excellent field position now for Notre Dame. 34-yard punt by Spires. Taco Bell and the college football playoff are bringing the best of the regular season to the college football playoff by creating the Taco Bell Live Moss student section. Today, Taco Bell picking up the tab for 500 students from each school here at the Goodyear Cotton Bowl. They'll also do it at the Capital One Orange Bowl in the national championship game so these passionate fans can root on their team. Each team's had it once. Notre Dame picked up 17 yards of field position in the exchange of punts. Ian Book, straight back. Ran out of time, had a good pocket, but couldn't find an open receiver. And Cleveland Furl got him down after a one-yard game. Well, that's the, the problem. They're trying to go with a deeper play-action pass. He was looking for Chris Fink on a crossing route, but you just don't have much time against this pass rush. And for the second time, we've seen that ball get knocked out before the runner touches the ground. It definitely was out. And Dabo Sweeney running up the sideline, trying to get a stoppage, and it looks like they do stop the it. The being down is under further review. Well, was there an immediate recovery after? Their ball is out before the, the legs are down, no question. The last time it came right back up into the hands of Dexter Williams. This time it looks like Cleveland Furl might have come up with the football. And he stripped the ball. And it certainly looks like it's in his lap. And that appears to me to be an immediate recovery. That ball very nearly got snapped. SEC officials on the field and in the replay booth. John Bible is the replay official here in Arlington. And there is also a video center for the SEC in Birmingham, which is consulting as well. Let's bring in our referee in the booth. Longtime Big Ten referee Bill Lamagne, who worked the national championship game between Auburn and Oregon. What do you think, Bill? We've got a fumble on the play. We do have a clear and immediate recovery. The Notre Dame player was in no position to grab the ball. Yeah. So I think that I, I think I know that they're going to take and give the ball over here to Clemson. Well, we talk about the margin of error for an underdog team like Notre Dame. You can't turn the football over carelessly. That's two times they've put the ball on the ground. They were lucky the first time. This time, I think Bill's right. I think Clemson's going to get it. And they don't take advantage of the short field with the exchange of punts. Those are two big mistakes by Notre Dame early in the football game. Furl, a redshirt junior from Richmond, Virginia. The ACC Defensive Player of the Year. Todd McShay has him projected as a top 10 pick in the next NFL draft. His really long arms. He's he's very fundamentally sound. He's excellent rushing the passer, and he's equally good against the run because of his length and strength. After review, the player fumbled the ball prior to being down. Ball was recovered by Clemson. Therefore, the ball will be placed at the minus 47-yard 
line, we're going to be first down. Clock operator, please reset the game clock to 11.50. 1-1-5-0. Just the fourth lost fumble of the year for Notre Dame, the second Please by Ian Book. Thank you. Let's see if Clemson and Trevor Lawrence don't try to take advantage of the momentum swing here and go for a deep shot down the field off of play action. Well, we've seen signs of big game jitters on each side. Obviously, Clemson, the much more experienced team in this setting, having been in the playoff now four years in a row. But Lawrence, last year, watched the playoff on TV, wondering if he might have a chance to play in it someday. Someday arrived one year later. Notre Dame showing blitz. It's a quick pop to T. Higgins. And he's into Irish territory to the 45-yard line where Drew Tranquil, the leader of that defense, made the stop. That's just a quick read by Trevor Lawrence. Notre Dame tried to fool Trevor Lawrence. They showed the blitz late. He read it and quickly threw the ball out to T. Higgins for a nice completion. Gain of seven. Lawrence... To the far side, a nice catch by Amari Rogers with Troy Pride in coverage and making the tackle, but it's a first down for Clemson at the 41. Amari Rogers is a, a guy that's built like a running back. This isn't a great throw by Trevor Lawrence, but the strength of Amari Rogers, he's got that strong running back body, was able to make the strong catch. He's the son of T. Martin, the former Tennessee quarterback. Up the middle, ETN got hit and bounced off it. Took a pretty good shot from Alohi Gilman, the safety, a transfer from Navy, who's given them much improved safety play this year over what they have had the last few years. Well, he plays bigger than he is, and so does Travis ETN. And you saw his ability to break tackles right there. A much different runner because of added strength than he was as a freshman last year. Blitz off the corner. And Lawrence rolled away from it. He's in trouble. Gets rid of it in the direction of Hunter Renfro. Who Lawrence told us is quarterback friendly. Yeah. And I would say that is an apt description. There are many others that apply to Renfro as well, including he's the all-time leading receiver in the history of the college football playoff with 31 catches, including a national championship game with him. Well, he's particularly quarterback friendly on third down situations because you know where he's going to be, and you know if you throw it anywhere near him, he's going to make the catch. Lawrence flips it out to ETN, has the first down, and is down at the 26. Tackled by Kayvon Coney, the linebacker, far and away, Notre Dame's leading tackler this year, the 107. Next is Gilman with 76. Well, watch John Simpson, the left guard, does a nice job getting out here and getting the lead block. All it took was one block for ETN. Nice job by Simpson. There's the block in the first down conversion. Got the block on Tranquil. They're deep at running back. Tavian Feaster in now. Clemson trying to capitalize on the Ian Book fumble. Feaster. Second stringer. All he has done in his career is average over six yards per carry. Second in Clemson history behind Travis Etienne. Junior from Spartanburg. Yeah, he's averaging only a paltry 5.8 yards per carry this year. Yeah, a little <laughs> off. He actually brought down his career average slightly with the 5.8 this year. ETN is 7.88 for his two years at Clemson. Quick step by Lawrence. Turned around to see the oncoming rush from Jalen Hayes and got it off to Amari Rogers for a short game. The players and coaches on each side talk about the poise and calm yeah. of these young and relatively inexperienced quarterbacks. And I think what we've seen on two plays from Trevor Lawrence is the strength because that's two times now that Notre Dame has had pressure in the backfield. Three rushers that weren't able to get to him. The Lawrence family in attendance. Amanda and Jeremy here from Cartersville, Georgia. I think he got his height from his dad. Jeremy's six foot seven. 
Third and seven, a blitz by Notre Dame in the throw, off target, trying to get it to the freshman Justin Ross, and it's incomplete. This is more extra rushers than Notre Dame has shown this season. They have typically been a team that rushes four. They try to keep everything in front. They are going after Trevor Lawrence in this ball game, and they've been timely blitzes. Clark Lee, the first-year defensive coordinator, good call right there on third down. Greg Hugel coming to the end of a very interesting career. He wasn't on the team early in his days at Clemson, sat in the stands, walked on, became an All-American while he was still a walk-on, and now he's the second all-time leading scorer in school history. His field goal from 40 yards gives Clemson the lead as they capitalized on the Ian Book fumble. 8.35 to go, first quarter. The Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic, brought to you by Goodyear. Hardworking tires that deliver blimp-worthy performance. Gatorade Thirst Quencher, the proven sports fuel. And Capital One, what's in your wallet? One of the legendary coaches in the history of college football have walked the sideline in South Bend. Rockney Leahy, Partsegan, Holt, all won national title. He used the number eight for Notre Dame. That's in the poll era. They've won others way back in the day. Some from organizations that no longer exist. Clemson, a field goal by Greg Hugel from 40 yards. B.T. Potter will kick off to Chris Fink. Potter will be their field goal kicker next year. He's been a very important part of their team this year. They kick off a lot as one of the highest scoring teams in the country. And more often than not, the opponents start at the 25. Here's Tom Rinaldi. Following that turnover, the book fumble, Chip Long, the offensive coordinator for the Irish, Sean, gathered the offensive unit around him, told them to keep their composure, play through it. And interesting, the first player to put his arm around book, Brandon Wimbush, the quarterback who he replaced back in September. Guys, we heard about what a short memory book has, his great ability to put a mistake behind him. We'll see if that gets tested right now, Sean. Chip Long said that yesterday. He's never been around a quarterback who is better able to put a bad play or bad half behind him. Book hands it off to Dexter Williams. Nothing doing. Trayvon Mullen, the corner there. Ian Book told us that quality comes from his dad, Rick, who coached him when he was a kid. His dad, 31 years in law enforcement, including 10 years as the leader of a SWAT team. So I have a feeling Mr. Book had a lot of situations <laughs> yeah. that he had to put behind him quickly, too. Now that next play mentality is so important as a quarterback. And Ian Book putting it to the test right now. Williams stuffed again. Well, one of the big stories, even before Dexter Lawrence was suspended, the matchup of the great defensive line returning all four starters this year, all of whom had won All-American honors in the past, against the very good Notre Dame line. Christian Wilkins says it's the best offensive line we've played with massive guards, each of them six foot six. Well, this run defense has been outstanding. Let's off both corners. Book got it off. Dexter Williams through the traffic for a first down and more. Yanked down at the 41-yard line by Isaiah Simmons, a linebacker. Because this ball was thrown behind the line of scrimmage to Dexter Williams, linemen could get downfield. It's a screen off a little route, and those blocks downfield enabled Dexter Williams to elude it. Notre Dame went quickly. They want to pick up the tempo when they can. That's Deep throw for Boykin. Lots of contact with Trayvon Mullen. And there is a flag down. Dabo Sweeney calls Boykin and Chase Claypool trees. They're both six foot four Defense inches. Defense number one. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. So Notre Dame is going to throw the ball up in the air a few yeah. times and see if the trees can catch it. Yeah, I mean, these corners for Clemson are big by corner standards. They're both six or six foot or six one, but you're talking about six three, six four, big physical receivers. You can see just too much contact there. They get the flag and and for the second time now, Notre Dame with good field position on the Clemson side of the 50-yard line. 
Clemson fans booing. They thought their receiver was held earlier without a call. They might have a point. Toss to Dexter Williams who lowers his head. They got taken down by A.J. Terrell, the other Clemson corner at the 37-yard line, perhaps the 38 as they spot it now. Nice little way of getting the ball to the perimeter. The fake inside by Chris Fink held the two inside linebackers, and Dexter Williams was able to get to the perimeter. Clemson from time to time when the opponents hurry has difficulty lining up. Book on target to fake the former walk-on. Tackled by Kayvon Wallace, the safety first down Irish at the 27th. Anytime that they can get matchups on the two safeties, Wallace and Hughes, I think it's an advantage for Notre Dame. Chris Bank, very much like Hunter Renfro for Clemson, a very dependable receiver on the inside. Junior out of Dayton, Ohio. Archbishop Falter. Book couldn't find anybody, pulls it down. Dino Babers, the Syracuse coach, called him an eel. He's yeah. so slippery when the Irish handled Syracuse at Yankee Stadium. The eel slithered ahead for, if that's what he'll do, for a first down. <laughs> Five-man rush. Nobody to throw to. Ian Book does what he does really well. He, he reads it. He makes a quick decision. Picked up a nice block by Dexter Williams and a first down. Three receivers to the right. They try the middle. And Todd, I think that is an example of a play they might not have run if Dexter Lawrence is in the middle of that defensive yeah. line. You don't try to go right up the middle when Lawrence is in there. And on that play right there, the next play on first down, it was a double team on Christian Wilkins. And that's the other thing that we're going to see more of in this game. With the absence of that guy, Dexter Lawrence, more attention will be paid to Christian Wilkins on the inside in the run game and the pass protection. Again, a blitz. Safety blitz by Muse was picked up. Book throws it away. Good coverage behind that blitz. And that's an important point because Brian Kelly told us that it was not in the game plan to double team Wilkins right. until Lawrence was suspended. But now we can slide our protection in his direction. We wouldn't have done that at all right. if Lawrence played. Well, that's why I think the, the coaches breathe the sigh of relief, and that's no disrespect to Albert Huggins or anybody else, but Dexter Lawrence is a top NFL pick. And it was Huggins' stand-in who put the pressure on Book. Little screen to Jafar Armstrong, who's played running back and wide receiver for the Irish. He did not get the first down, and Brian Kelly sends the field goal team out. Really nice tackle in space by the safety, Tanner Muse. He's a physical guy, and that's what he excels at, his tackling and physical play. There's Justin Yoon coming toward the end of his Notre Dame career. He hopes he has one more game left after today. Senior from Nashville. All-time leading scorer in the history of Notre Dame football. We asked him about that Thursday. He said that still has not sunk in. He passed Alan Pinkett for number one earlier this year. Now 367 career points. A tie game on a 28-yard field goal. Well, we take you from play to play, brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. And right now, one of the stories has just been that Notre Dame's been able to create some pressure on Trevor Lawrence, enough to make him uncomfortable. A little more extra rushers than they've shown throughout the season. They show blitz. Sometimes they're only bringing four, but they've created enough discomfort for Trevor Lawrence that he's four for eight here to start the game. And that's going to be important for this Notre Dame defense. We talked about their defensive line. They're an excellent group. Justin Yoon kicks off. Darion Kendrick will try it from near the goal line, and he's in trouble. Lost the ball for a moment. It is still in bounds, and Notre Dame has it. Chase Claypool, a starting wide receiver, has recovered the fumble. Well, we have seen ball security problems by both teams now. Again, when you have a long preparation time for a bowl game, you do live tackling early in your prep. Not much late. And there the ball is ripped out by Cole Komet. Yes. A tight end. And you said if there is an aspect of the game where it seems Notre Dame might have an edge, it's in special teams play. 
The question is, did the ball go out right. of bounds? Right. The ball clearly came out. It was ripped out by Komet, but did it go out of bounds? It looked like it might have touched the sideline there before Kendrick batted it back into the field of play as he tried to recover the loose ball. We have cameras everywhere. Unfortunately, we don't have pom-pom cam because that probably would have been a good view from the pom-pom of that Notre Dame cheerleader. We have 50 cameras here today, folks, so we should be able to see it. And that looks like the nose of the football is on the sideline. Bill Lamagne, my question would be, is that conclusive? Well, there's two elements here. Even if the ball was inbounds, if he reached out and his hand was out of bounds, touching the football inbounds, that puts the ball out of bounds. Or the football on its own going out. Even if he doesn't have possession of it? Even Touching if... a loose ball when you are out of bounds makes the ball dead. Mm -hmm. i be honest with you, I believe that this we've got a shot down the line. We can show that there's an inch of the ball that's out of bounds. It's out of bounds. That's the purpose of having that. And we have cameras that go down each sideline, the goal lines. Ordinarily on an ABC or ESPN College Football Saturday with our crew, we have 15 cameras. Yeah. We have 50. <laughs> From every every possible angle, we've got you covered. By the way, you are not getting your meal money for the next two years. You have to pay for this equipment somehow. Well, Kendrick, the true freshman from Rock Hill, South Carolina, hoping to hear some good news from Matt Austin, the referee. It looks like he may have been trying to bat it out of bounds, but he actually was knocking it back into the field of play. And we zoom in closer. After review, the fumble touched out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Therefore, the ball will go back to Clemson football at that spot. Clock operators, please reset the game clock to 426. This Four, might two, be a test of the kinder, gentler Brian Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> he just wants an explanation right now. Brian Kelly deserves a lot of credit. He has consciously made an effort to be more calm, to yell less often. I know it's hard for a Boston Irishman to do. Well, they, they got it right. I mean, we had finally had the right angle to see the ball did, the nose of the ball did touch out of bounds. A very dangerous play for Clemson, but fortunate to get the football back. I think the old Brian Kelly might be resurfacing just a bit here, and it's not as if he is completely stopped being animated on the sideline, but he just knows positivity radiates well to his team, and the players all say the difference in Brian Kelly, not just his comportment, but the time he spends with them now, delegating more to the assistants to allow him to do that, has made a big difference throughout their program. And, and he's smiling right here. I mean, he's making his point. He's smiling, and his facial color is normal. So I think... I think all that's good. As normal as it can be for a Boston <laughs> Irishman. Again, I can relate well to that. Grew up with many Brian Kellys. From Chelsea, Mass. Born in Everett. Raised in Chelsea and Andover, just north of Boston. In his ninth year at Notre Dame. Trevor Lawrence after the play fake. He's a good runner. He gets four. Tom Rinaldi, what did you hear? Just a couple of feet away there, Sean, and you could hear Brian repeating the same word, conclusive, conclusive, conclusive. I think he was trying to make the point that he didn't see anything in the state-of-the-art jumbotron here that indicated that it should reverse any call made on the field. He did not think it was conclusive enough to reverse it, but give him credit. He was temperate, certainly, and not the Brian Kelly of old, as you mentioned, Sean. And I think that is the argument from the Notre Dame standpoint. Pass broken up, intended for Hunter Renfro. And right there on time, Jalen Elliott, their outstanding second-year starter in safety. Drew Tranquil told us the play of the two safeties has transformed the Notre Dame defense this year. That's the free safety, Jalen Elliott timing it perfectly. The throw intended for Renfro. It's a good throw, but perfect timing by the safety helping over the top in another third down situation. He's a junior from Richmond. It is a very experienced Notre Dame defense. All 11 starters have at least 10 career starts. Third down and seven, four minutes to go in the opening quarter. Lawrence on target. Hunter Renfro, Mr. Third Down. They call it Third and Renfro at Clemson. He converts. 
And that's what Trevor Lawrence is looking for. Who's matched up on Hunter Renfro? It's Drew Tranquil, a great player, but you see him favoring the inside. He knows Renfro's quicker than him. He has to protect the inside, and that's an easy throw on third down for Trevor Lawrence. 40 of catch on third down that results in a first down. Amari Rogers. The catch and run out across the 30-yard line. So far, Notre Dame has done in this game defensively what they've done all year, and that is prevent the big play, the explosive play. They only gave up seven touchdown passes all season, but they keep the ball in front of them, and they tackle extremely well. ETN could not break free from that tackle. Drew Tranquil there with his running mate, Tavon Coney. Tranquil, a graduate student, two-time team captain, the only married player on the team. Married his high school sweetheart, Jackie, last summer. She's expecting in May. Great student. Graduated in mechanical engineering with a 3.73. Who do they guard Renfro with on this third down and short? Third down. Just more than four to go. Lawrence trying to run away from Galen Hayes, who looked gassed as he chased after him, but Julian O'Quara got there. And Lawrence never had the opportunity to throw it away. Well, this time on third down, they double covered Hunter Repro. It's going to start with the safety, Gilman. But as soon as he moves inside, there's Tranquil to help. And that's why Trevor Lawrence had to leave the pocket. He was looking for Renfro on third and short. Good change coverage by Notre Dame in a punt situation. For Will Spires, for Chris Fink, Spires' first punt was not good. He's the son of Bill Spires, two-sport athlete at Clemson in baseball, and he punted on the football team. He played 13 years in the major leagues. Fink, the fair catch. Notre Dame ball with their own 32, 3-3 three, three tie first quarter. New Year's Day, we invite you to sit back and enjoy three more college football bowl games on ESPN and one Eastern LSU and undefeated UCF in the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl, and it's the granddaddy of them all. Ninth ranked Washington against number six Ohio State in the Rose Bowl game presented by Northwestern Mutual, and we'll be in New Orleans for the All State Sugar Bowl, Texas, and number five, Georgia. First team left out of the four team college football playoff. They'll be trying to make a point that they should have been included. On first down for Notre Dame, two minutes to go in the first quarter, tied at three. Jafar Armstrong went ahead for six. You mentioned, Sean, this is a big offensive line, and their guards are particularly big. That's different, a different looking offensive line than Clemson has normally seen. Aaron Banks and Tommy Kramer, the guards, both six foot six inches, but Scrambled back to the line of scrimmage, chased out by Kendall Joseph. Uh, Ian's got to be smart running the football today. I think it's important that he runs, but we did the game against Northwestern early in the year. He got a rib injury, had to sit out the Florida State game. It obviously affected him the last two games of the year. He says he feels great right now. He's got to be smart and protect his body when he runs. Broken ribs on his right side. He told us yesterday he's 100% healed. Four-man rush on third and four. He got it off. Is that a wow. catch by Chase Claypool? Yes, it is. And a Notre Dame first down at the 44-yard line. Terrific catch by the junior from British Columbia. Wow, big, strong hands. And undoubtedly in the replay booth, they're taking a close look at it. He controlled the football. The ball can hit the ground, but he had control. There was no bobble and a good catch. Out of the pistol now, Ian Buck, look out, and he gets buried by Cleveland Furl. The Ted Hendricks Award winner as the top defensive end in the country this year. Well, they're trying to block him with a tight end. That's Cole Komet, number 84, trying to block him. That's a mismatch. This is the best pass rusher in the ACC, one of the best in the country. Led the league in sacks and tackles for loss. You better not try to block him with a tight end in a drop back pass very often. Ten and a half sacks and 17 tackles for loss for Furl entering this game. 
Second and 14, final seconds of the quarter. A blitz. Book got it off quickly to Alizé Mack, a tight end. He's down at the 48-yard line on the final play of the first quarter, we think. They stopped first the clock to move to the end. chains, and now the time has expired. A lot going on in that quarter, but just three points for each team. Back with second half action from the college football playoff after this. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. When you put in the hours, the reps, and the heart, nothing can keep you from being blimp-worthy. Goodyear more driven. On to the second quarter at AT&T Stadium. First time Notre Dame has shown an empty backfield, trying to find a matchup to throw on this third down play. And it gets blitzed. Brian Kelly said, we know they'll blitz the empty backfield. Another nice catch. This one by Cole Komet. Sophomore tight end out of Lake Barrington, Illinois. You spread the defense out. You only have five blockers. If they bring more than five, Ian Book has to read that. Get rid of the football. He was five on five. He got enough time, and he made the nice throw to Cole Komet for the first down. He's a good athlete, Komet. Also a pitcher on the Notre Dame baseball team. A lefty reliever. Book going deep. Another jump ball for Boykin. Incomplete. With A.J. Terrell, sophomore from Atlanta in coverage. Perfect coverage by Terrell. I mean, he was stride for stride with Boykin. Single coverage, no safety help. Six foot, 290 pound corner. That's, that's big for a corner. And he was right in perfect position on Boykin on that play. Brett Venable, outstanding defensive coordinator, brings another blitz. The play fake by Book. The quick hitter to Miles Boykin. Another product of the Chicago area from the south suburb home to a lot of Notre Dame fans. He was not one growing up He said I cheered With great vigor for Alabama in that national championship game, but he visited Notre Dame and like so many fell in love with it And be again on third down. Will they blitz it? Yes, they do But can't find anybody tries to hammer it to think that was as much as anything a throwaway. Well, and the problem, when you move the launch point and roll the quarterback out like they did on that play, you take away half the field. So you reduce your pass play to only half of the field. Ian Book knew he had pressure from behind. They had Jafar Armstrong running down the field, but he's just trying to get away from Cleveland Furl on that play. Fourth. And a long three, they're going for it. Justin Yoon told us his range is about 50. This would be 52, so they're not going to try a field goal. Book off his back foot, another jump ball, and beautiful coverage by Isaiah Simmons, a former safety, now a linebacker, running with the leading wide receiver for Notre Dame in coverage. Well, they thought they would have a matchup that favored them. It sounds right. Miles Boykin going against a linebacker, but this is no ordinary linebacker. This is a guy, as you mentioned, played safety. He's six foot four. He runs a four three. He's got extremely long arms, and he makes a beautiful play to knock that fourth down pass away. When we met with Isaiah Simmons the other day, you almost feel inadequate physically as a human being when you look at him. And he's still adding weight. Two-time long jump champion in the state of Kansas out of Olathe, Kansas. Grew up dreaming of running in the Olympics. Adam Choice. Another part of that deep Clemson running back stable. He got across the 41-yard line for seven on first down. This is an important drive for Clemson. Coming in, this offense averaging 530 yards a game. Kind of third in the country in yards per play. Notre Dame's held them to 2.6 yards per play so far in the ballgame. Trevor Lawrence surveyed the field. Checked it down to Travion Thompson, a wide receiver, with a first down at the 49-yard line. Nice patience. And I think that's what Trevor Lawrence is going to have to do. Again, this Notre Dame defense is not one that likes to give up big plays over the top. They're going to force Trevor Lawrence to be patient and read and take what that defense gives him. And that was a good decision right there. Two receivers bunched to each side. Adam Choice remains the running back. A deep throw by Lawrence, a lot of contact. Justin Ross broke free from it. He's down in the end zone. Touchdown, Clemson.
Hoffman. He's going to be working on Dante Vaughn. That stack formation makes it difficult to get good press coverage. And you just throw it up. Justin Ross, a freshman wide receiver, big, rangy. And Trevor Lawrence knows, throw it up against that single coverage. Give him a chance to make a play on a 50-50 ball. And Justin Ross comes through. 52 yards. True freshman to true freshman. Lawrence was the second ranked player in the entire country coming out of high school in any position. Ross, the number one player in the state of Alabama. The extra point is blocked. Hugel's kick rejected. He had made 72 in a row dating back to last year. All 68 this year. Jerry Tillery blocked the extra point. Good snap, good hold, but Jerry Tillery, good timing, got that left hand in and knocked it out in a positive way to end that drive for the Irish. Clemson leading 9-3. to three. Early second quarters, we welcome you back to the college football playoff semifinal at the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic. In Arlington, Texas, Tom McDonough, Todd Blackledge, down to the sidelines, Holly Rowe and Tom Rinaldi, and BT Potter's kickoff is a touchback. You know, that touchdown play, very interesting. The guy that was beaten on the play, Dante Vaughn, a backup corner, Julian Love, I'm looking back on the replay, he's not on the field. And Tom Rinaldi told us during the break that uh, he was not on for that entire possession, and uh, we don't know any status of his situation, but certainly if he is not available, that is a huge blow to the Notre Dame defense. He's their best cover corner. Notre Dame, very tight dispensing injury information, but Tom will do the best he can to find out what's going on with Julian Love. That would be a big story if he cannot continue in this game. Dexter Williams ahead for about five. Take a look at a play from earlier. Julian Love there, number 27, involved on the tackle. And at the end of the play, kind of grabbing, not hard to see. Maybe his hamstring bothering him a little bit, the left hamstring. But uh, again, he is a critical piece to this Notre Dame defense. Clemson again crowding the line. Dexter Williams trying to find a seam. That'll set up third down and two. Nolan Turner, backup safety, made the tackle for Clemson. This Clemson defense averaging, giving up only 2.4 yards per carry. They did not allow a single rusher to go over 100 yards. They kept a few teams, several teams, under 100 yards as a team rushing. Very difficult to run the football against. They led the nation in yards allowed per rush, and on offense, they led the nation in yards per rush. Coaches talk about we need to run and stop the run. And Clemson has done that as well as you can. Book off target. Third and two. They went to the air for Miles Boykin, a frequent target. But he's caught just one ball. He's been targeted four times now by Book. And that was a play that Ian Book just, he got, he got a little bit panicky. He didn't set his feet. They had the protection that he needed to make that quick throw. The linebackers were blitzing, so the middle was wide open. He didn't make a good throw to Miles Boykin. There's Tyler Newsom to punt. One of the team captains. Brian Kelly told us all the players vote on the captains. They can vote for anybody. Newsom was listed on every single ballot. The only player Brian Kelly has ever had anywhere earn that distinction. And Newsom is a punter. Another good punt. 52 yards. The Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic, brought to you by AT&T. More for your thing, that's our thing. Taco Bell's new cravings value menu, value beyond belief. And Allstate, reminding you that football season is mayhem. Clemson, Dabo Sweeney, 
No stranger to the playoff. In it for the fourth year in a row. Alabama has been in all five. They'll play tonight in the Capital One Orange Bowl against Oklahoma. 9-3 to three Clemson. They scored on their last possession and then had their extra point blocked. You get the feeling it's during the game. But a big possession yeah. here if Clemson can open up a little breathing room against the underdog Irish. Yeah. Julian Love, they're one of their leaders, still not on the field. Dante Vaughn, he's a big corner, which is good against some of these big receivers. 6'3", 211. Was in pretty good position on the touchdown, but uh, it's a great play by Justin Ross. But he's out there again. Vaughn is number eight on the top of your screen. Travis Etienne to the 27. Here's Holly Rowe. Well, guys, as you see Trevor Lawrence, the freshman quarterback for Clemson, wearing number 16, there's a very good reason. It's because of Peyton Manning, somebody that he grew up idolizing. Well, a couple of weeks ago, he got Peyton Manning's phone number. Peyton wanted to talk to him. So he said, I called him, but he didn't answer. So I didn't have the courage to leave a message. Peyton did call him back, though, and shared some details of how he goes about preparation, what he did acting to start as a freshman, and that has really helped Trevor Lawrence. He said it was pretty cool. Very cool. <laughs> He's on target to T. Higgins. Well, he asked Trevor Lawrence. He said, I had Peyton's number. I called him. I got his voice call. I didn't leave a message. <laughs> and here's how sharp Peyton is. Peyton was tipped off that Lawrence was going to call him. Yeah. And he saw the Atlanta, Georgia area code phone number, the Clemson area code yeah. phone number, and said, that must be Trevor Lawrence. He yeah. just dialed the number back <laughs> knowing he was going to get Trevor. You knew when Peyton Manning was at Tennessee, he would be a star. Every NFL person we've talked to thinks this guy, when his day comes, will be the number one player taken in the NFL draft. He has everything you're looking for in a quarterback, college or pro. Time off, Clemson. The first time out of the half. With a big third down and four. Upcoming. 10.05 to go in the first half. Clemson by six. Want to stay up to date? Hey Siri, what bowl games are coming up? So I guess I'm playing the part of Siri here. <laughs> Difficult to do. It's the college football playoff semifinal, the second of the day from the Capital One Orange Bowl. Alabama, the number one team in the country, taking on Oklahoma, the Heisman Trophy winner. And Tua Tungavailoa, the runner-up. Julian Love is out of the tent now, but still on the Notre Dame sideline on the bike, trying to work out an apparent leg injury. Not on the field for third and four. And Clemson converts on the slant to Amari Rogers. Nice read by Trevor Lawrence. You have three receivers and a little bunch set there. He finds the inside receiver. That's Julian Okwara, who's down at the end of that play. Their best pure pass rusher. Mm. They're already playing without love, one of the best defensive backs in the country. Oquar, terrific pass rusher. Tom, do you know anything else about Julian Love right now? Well, he's working out on the bike right now, Sean, and he spent more than 15 minutes in real time inside the medical tent with three trainers inside there. Has come out no obvious limp in how he's walking. You see him working back and forth, the training staff keeping a close eye on him, smiling. He's smiling back. We'll have to see if he returns, but certainly they've missed him in the series when he has not been out there. Well, the problem with a hamstring, if that's what it is, Tom and Sean, is is the fact that it's it maybe feels good walking around, but can you push off and accelerate? Mm -hmm. And playing that position, you have to be able to accelerate, change directions, and that's the big question mark right now for Julian Love. So Quara walked off. He's the younger brother of the former Notre Dame defensive lineman Romeo Quar is now the leading sack man for the Detroit Lions this season. First and ten, Clemson. On their own 36, ETN took a big hit. Drew Tranquil with Alohi Gilman. Yeah. They list Gilman at 202. We saw him yesterday. He didn't look like he's 202, but he hits like a guy even bigger than that. Yeah, he plays with a real fearlessness. Transfer from Navy, started at Navy as a freshman, played on the scout team last year when he had to sit out at Notre Dame, and he throws his body around. And Notre Dame continues to do an excellent job on the running game at Travis Etienne. 
Came in averaging more than eight yards per carry. He has three yards per carry, five for 15 yards. Lawrence's pass batted down. Clark Lee, the defensive coordinator, told us they are going to try to get their hands up and bat down those yeah. quick passes around the line of scrimmage. You can see Jonathan Bonner pump his fist in the air as he delivered on what the coach told him. And that's not easy to do against a six foot six quarterback. He's got a high release. Jonathan Bonner just timed his jump perfectly. Big play right here for the Notre Dame defense. Three out of six on third down for the Tigers. 9.08 to go in the half. Third down, seven. They really don't come after Lawrence with much intensity, wow. and he fires a bullet for a first down. Justin Ross broke free to score the 52-yard touchdown, and he nearly escaped again, wrapped up by Dante Vaughn, and Alohi Gilman, it's a 35-yard play. Well, this is all because of tremendous pass protection. That's a deep route. It takes time to develop. Notre Dame rushed five, couldn't get anywhere near Trevor Lawrence. Out wide again for Ross. And a good tackle by Gilman. He's from Hawaii. He told us the reason he went to Navy was because that was the best football opportunity. It was, if you will, the biggest football school to give him a chance. And his family knew the coach, Ken Matalolo, from Hawaii, grew up with Aloe's mom, had done some camps with his dad. And he said it was the hardest conversation that he ever had to have when he told Ken that he wanted to leave Navy. Because he wants to play in the NFL someday. And did not want to have to fulfill the military commitment. At the end, throw to the end zone. Dropped by T. Higgins. That should have been a touchdown. He was open. And Higgins did not catch it. See, when you want to bring safety over the top to help the new corner, that leaves these guys more single. This safety right here gets fooled by the run fake. Watch Jalen Elliott. He's going to get fooled on the run fake and doesn't even see T. Higgins. And that's a would have been an easy touchdown. However, there was a penalty that would have brought it back. But Jalen Elliott, one thing about this Notre Dame defense, we talked to all the Clemson coaches and players that said one thing about this team, they are always where they're supposed to be, always in the right position. That time they were not. Holding penalty against Clemson was Sean Pollard. But they're also used to being in the right position when they have Julian Love right. out there who plays every down, 34 straight starts. Lawrence. And with Julian Love, you can pretty much say, okay, he's the boundary corner. We can leave him alone. We, we don't have to help him. Here's another injury to Alohi Gilman. Mm. Julian Love off the bike but still on the sideline. And he cannot get back in there fast enough. There's Gilman top right of your picture. I think it was on the block. It, it wasn't on. He didn't get involved in the tackle. Wow. Collided with his teammate Dante yeah. Vaughn. And at the end of the play, Tranquil comes in. It really looked like it was the hit from his own teammate, Vaughn, that caused the problem. Let's talk about the difference that Gilman has made. Terrific tackler. Last year, it's almost hard to believe, Notre Dame did not have an interception from a safety the entire year. Since 1964. That was the last time that had happened. Gilman has two. Elliott has four. And one more from the backup safety, Nick Coleman, so they have seven this season. He's very smart. And against this team, Clemson, especially when guys are going to get free yeah. in open spaces, the coaches talked about the importance of his tackle. Yeah. One of the best tacklers on the team. And I'm not a doctor. I'm not speculating, but that has all the earmarks or appearances of a stinger type thing that kind of stunned him. He looks pretty good walking off the field right now, but just don't know the extent of that. And now you have a third down in a critical part of the field without Gilman and without Julian Love on the field. 
and without your best pass rusher, Julian Aquora, not on the field. So now they go to Devin Studstill at safety, who played in only five games all year. He's number 14. Holly Rowe, what do you have? Well, guys, I just happened to be standing right where Logan Gilman was talking to the Notre Dame athletic trainers. He was complaining of some pain right where your clavicle or your collarbone would be, but then they also examined the back of his neck. So it could be a singer situation, Todd, but he was definitely in pain on the right shoulder clavicle area. Julian Aquara, their best pass rusher, still on the sideline as well. Four-man rush. Lawrence is sacked! Back at the 31-yard line, the man who came in for Aquara made the play out of Kumbo KJ, the redshirt sophomore out of West Bloomfield, Michigan. And he just is going to whip the best offensive lineman. That's Mitch Hyatt, consensus All-American, gets whipped on the play. It was a four-man rush. It wasn't a blitz and a much-needed quarterback sack by the Notre Dame defense. To force a long field goal try for Hugel. Made his only field goal today from 40. This is from 49, the right hash mark. It's an ugly-looking hook, and it's wide left. What a sack, what a play by the undermanned Notre Dame defense. The fourth the long field goal, Will Sweeney, Dabo Sun, the holder. Nothing wrong with the execution. Now that was pulled right away. You can see that coming right off the foot. It was going dead left. And problems on special teams for Clemson. You mentioned, Todd, if they have a weakness. That might be it, although Hugel's had an admirable career. Logan Day J had a half a sack coming into today's game for the year. Some trickery. Fink gave it back to Buck. Clemson not full. Not at all. Excellent discipline by the Clemson defense. First trick play of the ball game. Brent Venable's group not fooled at all. Ball is going to go back to Ian Book. You're hoping for somebody to run free. They don't even have an outlet receiver. Jafar Armstrong's not even open as a dump off. And Ian Book does the only thing he can, throw the ball away. Excellent defense by the Tigers. Book, another jump ball. That one completed to Miles Boykin with Trayvon Mullen in coverage. The Irish to the Clemson 45-yard line. Ball is thrown to the outside shoulder. Mullen runs past the receiver, and those are so difficult to defend. Throw it to the outside, away from the defender, a little bit underthrown, and a nice play by Boykin. 23 yards, longest play from scrimmage for the Irish today. Dexter Williams cannot run through that line, even without Dexter Lawrence in there. A fired up Cleveland Furl led the Clemson front, and he did tell us early in the year it's pronounced Furl. Furl, like yeah, Furl. Like Furl. Furl. Right. He's a delightful guy. I mean, yes, really, he I mean, he and Christian Wilkins are two of the most delightful guys that you could ever, ever meet. So you would give him a good referral. Yeah. Book throws, caught, and balls out. Was it a catch and then a fumble? Was it an incomplete pass for the moment? A catch, the fumble, and a recovery by Alizé Mack. Isaiah Simmons was there for Clemson. I think they're going to take another look yes. at this. Did he have possession? Did he make a football move up the field? The previous ruling of a completed pass is under further review. I don't think this one's going to stand as a completion. Mac, in the words of Chip Long, the offensive coordinator, can be as good as he wants to be. 6'5", 247, excellent receiver. Simmons was the guy who got there and knocked the ball out. Well, let's bring in Bill Lemonnier again. Bill, what do you think? You got to have a couple things to get a catch. You got to have control, inbounds, and you got to be able to do something common to, the, common to the game. You can slow this down all you want and make it look like a catch, but this is an incomplete pass. He did not do anything common to the game. So replay should reverse this incomplete. How do we define common to the game? I imagine there's an <laughs> awful lot of latitude or question there. That seems exceedingly vague to me. We can need to open Bill's mic again. Uh, the thing you have to do with common to the game is, can you turn and make a football move? 
Can you stretch like you were going for a first mm -hmm. down? Can you turn and take so steps? So how much more would he have to have turned and moved? Before? I would have wanted to see him turn and get more of the shoulders turned around mm -hmm. and, a, and a further into a step. Well, regardless, what we've seen from Notre Dame that has hurt them as we wait the call right here. After review, the pass was incomplete. The ball will be replaced back at the 45-yard line. I and think set the game clock to 5:57. I think that's the right call. 5:47. But what we've seen that has hurt Notre Dame is is they've not taken great care of the football. We've seen a, a couple fumbles. They recovered one of their own fumbles. They lost the fumble by Ian Book. That's a catch that should be made. Chase Claypool dropped one on the sideline. You could read Brian Kelly's lips very clearly. He made a move with the ball. But John Bible in the replay booth does not concur. So here's third down and ten. Notre Dame three out of seven on third down. Pressure and in trouble is Dexter Williams. Drop behind the line of scrimmage. A host of Tigers there led by Austin Bryant, the senior from Pavo, Georgia, another All American on that defensive line. Well, Xavier Thomas, who's the next great one, watch him set the edge of the defense. He has contained, he's not going to let Dexter Williams get outside, forces him back inside to Austin Bryant. And Dexter Lawrence, who the the guys we talked to said he's been, he, he knows he couldn't play. He's been like a coach, an encourager, liked what he saw on that play. Tyler Newsom, fourth and 17, hangs it up high again. And a fair catch by Amari Rogers at the 15-yard line. 37-yard punt this season for every field goal and extra point made by participating universities all state will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund millions donated by all state since 2005 we say thank you to them for continuing that terrific program that benefits many very hard fought football game so far low scoring this is a critical time for both teams Clemson with the football they'll get the football to start the third quarter they want to try to seize momentum in the game on this drive right here. No Julian O'Quara or Julian Love. And no Gilman either. Travis Etienne, the ball carrier. Here's Tom Rinaldi. Well, in terms of Gilman, Holly was exactly right. They had him testing the range of motion on his neck, and from that area up, they have not allowed him to return yet. Julian Love was going through different exercises, trying to test both legs, it appeared. Again, we never want to speculate, but clearly trying to test his comfort range of motion from the waist on down. Has his helmet, appears eager to get back in the game, but not in yet, guys. Yeah, and I was mistaken. I didn't think Gilman was on the field on that play. Great for him to be back for this Notre Dame defense. Second and seven. Swung out to Ross. Good job to stay on his feet. Young man who didn't want to play football in high school had to be convinced by his coaches to continue. He wanted to be a basketball player. He made the right decision. Well, the combination of he and T. Higgins, <laughs> really difficult. They're both long, athletic. They're getting stronger the more they're in the program. Very difficult guys to match up with in one-on-one -on -one situation. Third down and one. Clemson has thrown the ball on every third down, and then the last third down was that big sack when they were trying to throw. And Ogan DJ brought down Lawrence. Lawrence, the fake, ooh, he got smoked, but got just enough for the first down. I, I think he realized Notre Dame's defense got there so quickly he could not slide. It was a good read to pull it, but Coney and Gilman were there so quickly he couldn't slide for the first down. He had to try to fight for it, and he took a hit from Gilman. After taking a high hit in his first career start against Syracuse late in the first half, he left the game and did not return after going in the concussion protocol. He throws on the run. Defender nowhere near Hunter Renfro. And it's a first down for Clemson. Well, Asmar Bilal was coming on a blitz. He's going to be wide open here, but he runs right past it. He goes for the play fake, loses contain, and Trevor Lawrence makes the nice throw to Renfro on the bootleg. Bilal was unblocked, but got fooled by the fake. 
from the Clemson 41. Lawrence again. This is a nice changeup by Tony Elliott, the offensive coordinator play caller. Travis Etienne is the focal point of the Notre Dame defense. They have stuffed him. So get your quarterback involved in the zone read aspect and see if it loosens up things for Travis Etienne. Julian Aquara back on the defensive line for Notre Dame. Look out from behind. He got hit as he threw it. And an incomplete pass intended for Hunter Renfro. But there is a flag down right over on the sideline. Renfro was working on Dante Vaughn on that play. Holding defense number eight. It's a 10 yard penalty for the previous spot. Automatic first down. We talked to Clark Lee mid-season when we had a Notre Dame game, and he said Vaughn might have been their best cornerback in the preseason. And yeah. then when the regular season started, it really fell off, and he struggled through a lot of the year, but forced to play more in the absence of Julian Love. Well, and you have to have a short-term memory to play that position <laughs> because they're going to keep going at him here as long as he's on the field. ETN. Ahead for a yard. And Todd, that brings to mind what Tony Elliott said to us when he looked at the Notre Dame defense. He said, usually when you game plan, you look for the weak link. Where's Waldo, he called it. Who right. can we attack and take advantage of? So Notre Dame doesn't have one of those guys. They might think Vaughn is one of those guys now. Well, and that's more because of how good they know Julian Love is. I mean, if he's out of the game, go after his replacement. Short set, and the pass broken up by Drew Tranquil, former safety and rover. Drew into the linebacker spot, and likely to have an NFL future. Minute 51 to go on the half, two timeouts for Clemson, three for Notre Dame, third down and nine at the Notre Dame 37. And a welcome sight for the Notre Dame defense, Julian Aquora right here, back on the field on this third down pass situation. Looked like there was movement early at the right end of that offensive Curtis line by Tremaine Anchor. Off at 73. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. It's a great little stunt that they run, and Ankrum's right here is going to move early, but both linebackers are going to blitz. They're going to bring Tillery along the outside, and Ankrum with the early movement, but that's a difficult stunt to pick up because you're forcing your back to pick up a hard-charging guy. So now third down and 14. They're not in field goal range, perhaps four down territory if they make some progress on this play. Four receivers for Trevor Lawrence. Down the seam, open man, Ross again. Touchdown, Clemson. It's single coverage on a Lowy Gilman, and he just gets caught flat-footed, and Ross goes right by him. Gilman is thinking he's going to break off the route to try to pick up the first down, and Ross never slowed down. Ran the seam route right down the hash, and Trevor Lawrence read it and hit him for the touchdown. Outstanding 85-yard drive. Six out of ten on third down today. That's been big. Greg Hugel, the extra point. And Clemson, as we approach halftime, now leads 16 to 3. Two touchdowns. 52 and 42 for the freshman from Phoenix City, Alabama, Justin Ross. Coming up, stay tuned for the Indeed Halftime Report with Adnan, Joey, and Jesse. Adnan looked like Usain Bolt on the treadmill today at the hotel this morning. <laughs> Minute 44 to go in the half. Been an important possession here for Notre Dame. Clemson will get the ball to start the second half. 
Here's a look at this blimp-worthy play brought to you by Goodyear. Uh, we'll go back and look at the touchdown. Now, without Julian Love on this third down play, Notre Dame took three defenders to cover on that side. This is Dante Vaughn, who's in for Julian Love. So what they had to do is take Tranquil to help underneath. That left Aloe Gilman by himself, trusting that Trevor Lawrence wouldn't find that single coverage. He ran right by Gilman. Lawrence was looking right in the right spot, and they got the touchdown. Ian Book over the middle, and a good job by Chris Fink to hang on as he got plastered by Trey Lamar, the sturdy linebacker at 255 pounds. Ian Book gets them up quickly. He's 10 out of 17 passing. Pulls it down. Gets back to the line. Wrestled down by Isaiah Simmons. Well, another great play by Simmons. This is a guy at safety last year coming off the bench at 49 tackles. He led the team with 83 tackles this year. Very rangy and just gets better the more he plays. Pump fake. Boy, the coverage has been excellent all day downfield by the Clemson defense. He tried to check it down to Tony Jones and couldn't complete to the running back. Uh, and Brent Venables has been able to force a lot of third down and long passing situations. You take the run out of the equation. You turn your pass rushers loose. Brian Kelly. Understandably concerned. He's no longer the play caller when he hired Chip Long last season. He let the offensive coordinator, who came from Memphis, call the plays. This is a big play call for the young coordinator. Wide receiver screen. They were hoping for a lot of run after the catch with nine to make. They got three from Chase Claypool. And Davo Sweeney uses a timeout. I mean, he kind of smells blood right here. 55 seconds timeout. left in the half. Timeout, Clemson. If nothing else, maybe try to pressure the kick here. They get the ball to start the third quarter. So they were able to seize momentum with that last touchdown drive. A very important part of the game right here. Let's take a look at the AT&T college football playoff bracket. And we're finished here in Arlington, Texas. We go to South Florida for the Capital One Orange Bowl. Alabama and Oklahoma. I think I heard... Reese Davis say this morning on game day that Oklahoma has given up more points than Alabama and Clemson combined. <laughs> so we've seen a lot of Oklahoma in yeah. recent weeks. They're still giving up points, but that defense has had a knack lately of making some plays. Is the defense good enough to compete in that one? You got to hope they can make, if you're Oklahoma, you got to hope they make a couple plays. But Oklahoma, they're comfortable turning a game into a track meet. That, that's what they want to do. They want to hope to outscore you. The problem is Alabama is not a typical Big 12 defensive football team. Tyler Newsom to punt. Amari Rogers back deep. Another rocket. A little too far off the foot of Newsom. The top two vote getters in the Heisman Trophy race. The Alabama folks thought Tua Tunga Valoa should have won it. He was the runner up to Kyler Murray and hard to argue with the selection of either one of them yeah. and in any other year, a lot of other years at least, Tunga Vailoa would have won. It was a great year for candidates. And it was, and it went down to the very last game, and unfortunately for Tua, he was not healthy for the majority of that SEC championship game, did not play well. Tyler Murray played very well in the game that we did, the Big 12 championship game, and, and I think that sealed it for Kyler Murray. Tunga Vailoa left the SEC championship game. Jalen Hurts replaced him. One of the great stories of the year as he led Alabama back to the SEC title against Georgia. Tango Bailoa had an ankle surgery and has been working his way back. He's ready to go. It'll be interesting to see how healthy he is. Dabo Sweeney, a short completion from Lawrence to Amari Rogers. If he gets a first down here, he'll use that timeout. Has one left. Khalid Kareem was well across the line of scrimmage. He's trying to get back. Whistles blew. And flags flew. Offside. Defense number 53. The Clemson head coach has declined the 10 seconds of traction. Therefore, the clock will start on the snap.
And now with a little better field position, having hit on a couple of long balls, will Trevor Lawrence fire one deep again? Notre Dame in the regular season gave up only one touchdown pass of more than 20 yards. That was against Northwestern. That's Vaughn on the bottom. Giving up two long touchdown passes today, both by Ross after catch and run. Rodgers out of bounds. Stop the clock with 17 seconds to go. It is a first down. Yeah, Notre Dame, if you tell them coming into the game they would hold Clemson to 42 yards rushing in the first half, they'd be thrilled with that. They've been good all year, as you mentioned, stopping long touchdown passes. Only one over 20 yards coming in and two today. One timeout for Clemson. Prevent defense here for Notre Dame. A three-man rush and still an open man. And it's Renfro who got walloped. But he's deep into Notre Dame territory now. And Dabo Sweeney will call the timeout. They're going to mark the ball at the 34-yard line. Personal foul, roughing the passer. 99 defense. 15-yard wow. penalty added to the end of the run. First down. Another critical mistake by Notre Dame, and it's by one of their veterans, the senior from Shreveport, Gary Tillery, one of the best defensive linemen in the country. It's only a three-man rush, so perfect protection for Trevor Lawrence well after the play. An easy call to make on Tillery. The route by Hunter Renfro was spectacular. The little outfake fooled the safety Gilman, who was victimized on this play again. The craftiness of Hunter Renfro running that post route against two deep safeties and the big arm throw by Trevor Lawrence. And a huge penalty. Would have been borderline field goal range, about 51 yards for Hugel. We saw him miss a 49-yarder earlier. His season long is 49. But now they're in field goal range comfortably, so the question, Todd, that they're probably discussing, do you take the chance and run a play with no timeouts left in nine seconds? Well, I think if you trust your quarterback, which I think they do, you maybe take one shot at the end zone. And then you settle for the field goal. And again, knowing you're going to get the ball to start the second half, which is super important. Notre Dame defense, which has prided themselves all year on preventing the big play, not giving up big run plays, not giving up big pass plays, has been victimized here in the second quarter. And one of the questions heading into this game, did Notre Dame have enough speed to compete? Do you think it's the speed differential, or is that not an issue? I, I, well, it's always an issue, but I think that they're able to overcome that by being in the right position, tackling well, taking good angles, but they've been out of position some on some plays today. They'll run a play. Again, very tentative rush. Lawrence lops it up to the end zone. Juggling catch made. Was it inbound for T. Higgins? At least for the moment, the answer is yes. And it's Dante Vaughn to stand in for Julian Love in coverage again. Well, Dante Vaughn actually got a hand on this ball. He knocks it up in the air. Unfortunately, it goes up in the air and not to the ground, and Higgins is able to snag it. Does he get one foot in with possession? Unbelievable concentration by T. Higgins. Well, fans on both sides are cheering. The Clemson folks think it's clearly a touchdown. The Notre Dame fans are saying that's not a touchdown. Let's bring in Bill Lamagne, who's had a busy first half. What do you think, Bill? I'll tell you what, they've been challenged on calls today. This is close. He's got control of the ball. The foot touches. Now he mains contr maintains control of the ball going to the ground. Touchdown. Yeah, the foot definitely came down before the elbow out of the end zone. He had control of the catch. And that's the critical thing, Todd, as you know. He's got to have control of that ball. If he only had control of the ball airborne, yeah. Now lands out of bounds, it's incomplete. But he had that foot down with control. So I see replay going touchdown, confirming this and going touchdown. That was the call on the field. And this is a huge replay review because they will certainly try a field goal if the touchdown is taken down. And for Dante Vaughn. Review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. For Dante Vaughn, that's two touchdowns he's given up, but he's been in good position on both. 
<laughs> he got beat by Justin Ross where he was in good position. That time he actually got a hand on the football. But T. Higgins just did what he's been doing all year is catching touchdowns in near the red zone. Well, we asked Hunter Renfro yesterday, Holly did, how come Hunter Renfro, you have just one touchdown catch this year? Because we have T. Higgins and Justin <laughs> Ross. Yeah. They had scored all three touchdowns today. Well, Sweeney got the hold down. Hugel kicks the extra point. T. Higgins, sophomore from Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Tremendous athlete. He was the finalist for Mr. Basketball in the state of Tennessee in high school. And an emerging star as a wide receiver in college football. Now you give guys like this a chance to make a play. This is great coverage. I mean, you can't do anything better other than knock that ball to the ground. But T. Higgins never loses his concentration, his eyes on the football, and then makes the solid catch and gets the foot down. Man, that's unbelievable. So many weapons for Tony Elliott, the play caller, co-offensive coordinator with Jeff Scott. Dabo Sweeney's son, Clay, 15 years old, keeps a touch chart to make sure all of those weapons yeah. get ample touches. And how about this guy? I mean, he, he does not play like a freshman. He doesn't look like a freshman. He runs the show. He gets the ball where it's supposed to go. We talked at the beginning of the game about the big story of the week, the impact of the loss of Dexter Lawrence. A little pooch kick and a fair catch made. Without the great defensive tackle in there, Clemson has absolutely stuffed yeah. the Notre Dame run. 36 yards rushing for the Irish. The bigger absence in this game has become Julian Love. That's right. That's right. Clemson has absorbed the loss of Dexter Lawrence. Dabo Sweeney said, hey, this is a great opportunity for Albert Huggins to step up. And Huggy Bear has played well so far, but... You're right, Julian Love, that, that ended up being the biggest absence of the game through the first 30 minutes. By far the biggest deficit of the season for the Irish. The previous deficit was 10 points in the regular season finale at USC when they came from behind a win. The three points, their lowest first half. The previous low was six against Pittsburgh in South Bend. They did come back to win that one. But a much better opponent here today. Here's Holly Rowe with Dabo. Well, Coach, Notre Dame is very good at not giving up explosive plays. So two big touchdowns with explosive plays. How much is that the play call? How much is that your 19-year-old freshman quarterback making reads? Well, I mean, it's you, you, you got to give him the play call for him to for him to make the read. So we're staying aggressive. You know, we we we, we just kind of hung in there with the run game. We haven't run it great, but I thought our quarterback run game kind of kind of got us in rhythm a little bit. The drive before last. But, you know, we've gotten some one-on-ones. We've hit some balls over. The, when they played cover two, we've hit some big balls over the middle. But our playmakers are making plays, and 16 is one of them. So he's making good decisions. They gave us a one-on-one -on -one right there. But what a drive, 48 seconds with a timeout to go down. That's what it's all about. But, you know, we haven't played perfect. I mean, we've, we've blocked, got a kick block. we dropped the kickoff return. So we got to go in here and clean up some things, and we can't give up on the run game. we got to find some rhythm and balance. Just to take a little pressure off of him. Thank you, Coach. You got it. Thank you. Tom. I love Dabo. Most coaches Thanks, can't wait Thanks, Holly. To run Appreciate away. that. Brian, Julian Love out for the majority of that first half. A huge loss. What do you know about his status? Yeah, he was taken out of the game uh, with a head injury. Uh, that's all I was told. Uh, so he was not back in the game. And you know, we got we got to step up. Uh, they they made three big plays in the passing game, and that's really the difference. We got to coach better. We got to play better in the second half. You, know, you hate to give up points before the half. How do you begin to overcome this deficit? Well, I mean, look, we got to make plays on offense. We've dropped the ball. We fumbled the football. We have not played well enough to be in this football game. So, you know, we've given uh, Clemson a lot of opportunities here. We've got to play better football. So we have nobody to, to blame but ourselves. We can win this football game if we start to play better football, but we're running out of time. Appreciate it, Brian. Thank, Thank you. And the new positivity of Brian Kelly will probably be on display in that locker room at the half. The Indeed Halftime Report with that and Jesse and Joey coming up after these messages. Win, 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 win. And the playoff is underway. It's a lot of contact. Justin Ross broke free from it. Touchdown, Clemson. Down the seam. Open man. Ross again. Touchdown, Clemson. Juggling catch made. Touchdown. Win. Win, 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 win. We welcome you.
bring you back to the college football playoff semifinals from the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic in Arlington, Texas, AT&T Stadium, the home of the Dallas Cowboys of the NFL. Clemson with a big second quarter leads Notre Dame 23-3 as we head to the second half. The winner on to the national championship game a week from Monday night in Santa Clara, California. Very impressive yeah. performance by Clemson, particularly in that second half. And clearly the injury in the secondary to Julian Love of Notre Dame really hurt. It really hurt because Notre Dame did a great job taking Travis Etienne out of the game. And Clemson said, okay, if you're going to do that, we're going to put the hand in the ball, uh, the ball in the hands of our young quarterback. And I'll tell you what, that, that Dabo Sweeney hit, uh, touch chart is perfect because he spread the ball all over the field. I mean, Justin Ross, five catches. Amari Rogers, six catches. Renfro, three. Higgins, three. Spread the football around and really started to attack that defense down the field. Trevor Lawrence, three touchdown passes. The college football playoff record for a semifinal game. The previous record was two in a semifinal held by six others. He threw for 264 yards and three touchdowns in the half. And they'll get the ball first, as we said. Justin Yoon to kick off. Darion Kendrick back deep. It's a touchback, and now our Capital One rewarding performance. Well, Trevor Lawrence in that first half, three touchdown passes. He found the weak spot. They had to take Julian Love out of the game. Dante Vaughn came in. He's in good position, but he fell down at the point of uh, truth. And then this time they get Ross, runs right by Gilman. Trevor Lawrence reads it, makes the perfect throw. This is a Notre Dame defense coming in and had only given up one touchdown pass of over 20 yards. They gave up three in that second quarter as Trevor Lawrence got hot and diced him apart. Spectacular catch by T. Higgins on the third one. We're in a big development. Julian Love is back in the game now for Notre Dame. And immediately makes his return known as he drops Hunter Renfro after a short gain to pick up a three for Clemson. Here's Tom Rinaldi. Julian Love came out of the tunnel with the rest of his teammates, Sean, in a full jog, continuing to test the lower motion on that body, perhaps stretching out the hamstring, doing drills like that over and over. He had certainly a sight for sore eyes for this defense. What a difference when he was out for the majority of that first half, Sean. And the game changed dramatically in the second quarter when he left. Clemson on target, Lawrence. T. Higgins trying to break free, fighting for every inch. And he's to the 47-yard line of Notre Dame, although he, Gilman finally got him down, a gain of 25. See, Lawrence reads the linebacker. The linebacker still sits up on the tight end. He throws it right over his head to the crossing Higgins on the dig route. Just good patience and read. And again, the protection for Trevor Lawrence, outstanding. Ball deflected. Notre Dame needs a big play from the defense. Asmar Bilal went diving for it. They're calling They're it. saying he caught it, at least for the moment. The official from the far sideline ran in and kind of half-heartedly pointed in that direction. And that after the conference, he did it with a bit more enthusiasm. Donovan Bonner, another deflected yeah. pass. It's an RPO. They fake the run. Bonner gets his hand on it. Does he have control as he goes to the ground? Well, Bill Lamagne, I don't want to jinx him because he's been all over it all day. What do you think, Bill? He started to have control, but that ball he does not have firmly. The point of the ball hits the ground, incomplete pass. Again, as we've right said there. earlier, the ball can touch the ground as long as the receiver or defender has control as he's going to the ground. It doesn't appear that he has control of the football. Well, they review it. I want to go back to what Tom Rinaldi said about Julian Love because there seemed to be some question about what his yeah. injury was. Was it a head injury? Was it a hamstring? We saw him grab the back of his leg when he first went out of the game. If it was a hamstring, why was he just sitting on the sideline watching? You know, he kind of leisurely rode the bike and then he was sitting there. If that's what it is and there's a chance to get him back in, wouldn't you take him somewhere and be giving him as much treatment nonstop as you'd need to to get him back out more urgently? Yeah. Well, I think the fact that we just don't have enough information mm -hmm. to know what the situation truly was, 
uh, it's kind of hard to speculate. It is good to see him back on the field because not only is he their best cover corner, but he's one of those six defenders on this defense with over 25 games of starting experience and one of the real leaders of this group. No doubt. 34 consecutive starts tonight. Tom, can you elaborate? I know that Brian Kelly referred to it as a head injury, yes. clearly, Sean, but when he emerged out of that tent after between 15 and 20 minutes of treatment of real time, he continued to do drills, crouching down, trying to stretch out the hamstring on both sides. That's what perhaps indicated more than anything else, as well as pregame, when Julian Love was off by himself, continuing to stretch long before the rest of the team goes through their customary drills. So that's what perhaps indicated After review, the defender never maintains possession throughout the catch. Ball hit the ground between his hands. Therefore, it's an incomplete pass. Ball will be returned to the previous spot, where it will be second down. Please reset the game clock to 13.53. 13.53. Well, outstanding job by Bill Lamagne in the booth with us, and outstanding job by the replay officials mm -hmm. because they have been right on it every Thank single you. call. So the ball stays with Trevor Lawrence and Clemson. And just to reiterate the importance of Julian Love, first team All American. Yeah. The all time leader in Notre Dame at passes broken up. Also holds the single season mark. He had 20 of them last year. Three career defensive touchdowns. Only Tom Zibikowski has had more in the history of Notre Dame football. ETN spins ahead for a yard. Tavon Coney in on the stop. It'll be third down, and third down was the key for Clemson in that second quarter. They're six out of ten for the game. And nine of those ten third down plays, they threw the football. I would expect to throw here on third down and nine. Trevor Lawrence, 264, through the air at the half. That is a Cotton Bowl Classic halftime record. The previous mark, 245 by Baylor's Bryce Petty against Michigan State in 2015. A Notre Dame blitz. Lawrence has time. Launches one up in the air. Some contact. T. Higgins, the intended receiver. No flag. Troy Pride had excellent coverage. The junior from Greer, South Carolina, who was excited to play against his home state university, Clemson. Gets right in the hip pocket. There is contact. He reads the eyes of the receiver, then rips up through the hands as the ball is coming to Higgins. Pretty good coverage, I think, by Troy Pride. I like that there was no call there. Brian Polian, the Notre Dame special teams coach, said one of the things you have to watch out for, particularly in big games, is fakes in special teams. With a big lead here, you would think they would play it conservatively, and Will Spires does punt it away, and Chris Fink makes a fair catch inside the 13-yard line. College football playoff national championship weekend in the Bay Area. That's going to be the place to be, whether your favorite team is playing or not. You can learn more about the events and festivities planned for CFE's championship campus at collegefootballplayoff.com. Don't miss out on the biggest weekend of the college football season. National championship game a week from Monday night in Santa Clara, California, at Levi Stadium, the home of the San Francisco 49ers. Can Ian Book get this offense going? He's chopped down after a two-yard run by Kayvon Wallace. Let's check in with Holly Rowe. Well, everybody wanted to know how Clemson would absorb the loss of Dexter Lawrence, their great defensive tackle, and they've done it by committee. I've seen three different guys rotate in at his position, and as many as eight on the defensive front. Clemson has rotated a lot all year. They're continuing that same tradition. Guys are fresh, and they've held up pretty well without big Dex. Book running out of time through a wobbler that's caught by Boykin. Very little gain for Notre Dame with Trayvon Mullen right there. And we talked about the touch chart for Clemson in that first half, particularly the second quarter. Notre Dame not able to do the same thing. They have not been able to get the ball in the hands of their playmakers. They're three out of nine on third down. This is an area of the field where you think Chris Fink needs to kind of make a play for Notre Dame. And they bring him in motion. Four-man rush. Book. Trying to run for it. Dives to the line to make. Venables at the top of your screen. Can't believe it. 
They had him hemmed in. And Buck, with that much-discussed running ability, with a huge third-down conversion for Notre Dame. Well, just has a good feel for when to leave the pocket and how to elude pressure. And that was a much-needed conversion by Ian Book. Spins away from the rush. He's going to run again. And he runs out of bounds with an eight-yard gain. We talked to Ian Book yesterday, Todd. He said he really watches closely and admires Aaron Rodgers, Baker Mayfield, but particularly Drew Brees. Yeah. And when you watch him play, similar height, similar athletic ability, very accurate. I mean, anybody would have a long way to go to be Drew Brees. Yeah. But you can see the comparison. Play fake, and he's trying to get it to Boykin, who's trying to sell a flag, and he'll get it from A.J. Terrell. And Tommy Reese, the quarterback coach, former Notre Dame quarterback, said to him, why can't you be yeah. Drew Brees? And Book said, if I'm going to be Drew Brees, I need to study more because so much of Drew's success Defense is cerebral. Yeah. Defense number eight, 15 yards penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. They need him to start playing like Drew Brees right now. Working on Terrell down the bottom of the screen, short side of the field, and uh, a little bit of a sell job mm -hmm. by Boykin, but he gets the call. That's from referee Pat Cam. And plenty of flags, so there was consensus among the officials. I think they got to find a way to get Dexter Williams involved. Running it has not been the answer. Maybe a little screen pass or something to get him to football. They give it to him on a draw, and that worked well. Shot down by A.J. Terrell. He's just too valuable of a part of your offense and too much of a, a big play potential player to, to be quiet in a game like this. Huge part of their undefeated regular season, Dexter Williams. Hope you had a chance to see the great piece about Dexter and his family on game day this morning by Gene Wojciechowski. Book runs again for a first down. Dexter's parents are here. Cheryl on the right of your screen, Dad Leonard. Cheryl, 60 years old, battling two different diseases that could claim her life. Doctors have told her she probably will not live more than five more years. She's defeated the odds a few times, hoping to cheer for an Notre Dame touchdown, but Boykin had it batted away by A.J. Terrell. Well, Ian Book underthrows this ball just barely. Boykin's got the separation. Throw that ball out, and it's a touchdown. Because it was underthrown, Terrell was able to get a hand back in there and knock it away. If he throws that ball to the middle of the end zone, it's a touchdown for Miles Boykin. The Irish fans watching the replay on the enormous video screen overhead that gets everybody's attention in this building. They wanted another flag. They didn't get it. Very quick jump across the line. Bryant got to Book. He got the ball away to Williams, but he's dropped for a greater loss by Isaiah Simmons. Yeah. Boy, it looked live like Bryant might have been offside. If not, he timed that perfectly. Yeah, Robert Haynes, he had no offside. chance. Defense number seven. Yeah, yeah you're right. right. It was, it was second down. He definitely got a, a head start on Robert Haynes. -y. Right here he is, working on the right tackle, anticipating the snap. And a much more manageable situation for Ian Book in the Notre Dame offense now at second down. And five, ten minutes to go, third quarter. Boykin has been targeted eight times in the game, only three catches so far. Trying to take advantage of that height. Book sings one for a short game. Chris Fink, excuse me, Alizé Mack, and an excellent tackle by Tavon Wallace. Third down and two and perhaps four down territory. The way this game is going, you have to think Brian Kelly wouldn't believe a field goal is worth much right now. Two tight end set, a run formation here on third and short. It's a fake to Dexter Williams and whistles blow it down. Before the snap, false start, left guard offense, five-yard penalty, still third down. 
Notre Dame showing a run formation. They were going to go play action pass on that third down and short. Now they're in more of a definite passing situation, but I agree with you. It's probably two down territory here for Brian Kelly. Ian Book just has to, he either has to make a quick decision, get rid of the ball quick, or make a decision to scramble against his pass run. Four man rush, but Book in trouble again in town. Another loss of two. Now this is just a three man rush. It's the guy, Xavier Thomas, number three, is the guy that's going to put the most pressure on. Ian Book starting to feel the heat. Mm hmm. He's starting to move maybe when he doesn't need to move on that particular play. Only a three-man rush. He got five blockers. Trust your protection. Well, they're going to try a long field goal. This is interesting. Justin Moon told me Thursday, 50 is probably my max. Brian Polian, the special team coach, said 52 would be it. This would be 55. Didn't look like it was going to be a fake. There was a timeout called before the snap. Before the snap, timeout Clemson. The first timeout of the half. I think Dabo Sweeney might have been thinking a fake was coming. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, whether the drive is one yard or 100, it's hard work, determination, and grit that help you score. Goodyear more driven. Well, after the Clemson timeout, Brian Kelly has taken the field goal team off and has sent the punter, Tyler Newsom, out there on fourth down and nine at the Clemson 37-yard line. And it's down at the one yard line. Aloe Gilman, the starting safety, with help from Chase Claypool, and a job well done by Tyler Newsom. I was going to ask if you like the decision, Todd, but now you have to <laughs> back for the benefit of hindsight. The Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic. Brought to you by Taco Bell's new Cravings Value Menu. Value beyond belief. Northwestern Mutual. Spend your life living. And Experian. Identity protection has a new identity. Fifth year of the college football playoff. Ohio State, Alabama, Clemson, and Alabama. The winners of the first four. Tyler Murray and the Oklahoma Sooners arriving. At the Capital One Orange Bowl, getting ready to take on number one Alabama after we're done here in Arlington, Texas. Well, we saw Kyler Murray up close and personal the last two weeks of the season. We saw him in Morgantown against West Virginia in the Big 12 championship game. And uh, he's special, there's no question, but he's not seen a defense the caliber of Alabama, particularly in that defensive front. The Notre Dame punt has pinned Clemson at the two. Out of the end zone, out of the gun, the true freshman Trevor Lawrence. Travis Etienne almost broke free. Aloe Gilman, the safety up around the line of scrimmage, stopped it after a gain of a couple. Rare quiet day for Etienne, just 23 yards on nine carries. 2.6 average, came in averaging over 8 yards for carry 8.3. The way Gilman flies up there to stop the run, he's very susceptible to a play action fake and a throw deep. He's creeping up close to the right end of Lawrence, who zings one on target for a first down. Sixth catch for Justin Ross. That is a new single game high in this his freshman year. He previously had five catches twice, and he set the Cotton Bowl Classic receiving yards mark in the first half with 137, now up to 148. The previous first half Cotton Bowl mark was 128, receiving by Quincy Morgan of Kansas State against Tennessee in 2001. ETN, nice bounce outside. Can he get a loose? He didn't get a loose, but he got, it appears, 10 for another first down. I think that's his best run of the day. I think prior to that, his longest run was eight yards. 
was able to pop that thing back outside. Lead Khalid Kareem down at the end of that play. Junior defensive end from Detroit. Seven oh six to go in the third quarter. If you're a Notre Dame fan. The clock's moving quickly, yeah. and it's been kind of an excruciating game for Brian Kelly in the Irish. I mean, think of all the little things that looked like they were going to go their way that haven't. The kickoff fumble by Clemson in the first half by Kendrick. Looks like they've recovered. Notre Dame did deep in territory. The replay review took the ball back to Clemson. Rightly so, it seemed. Yeah. Ewan Book looked like he was going to get away with a fumble. Then after the replay review, he yeah. didn't. Well, I think I think Brian Kelly was exactly right when he told Tom coming off the field at halftime. We're not playing good enough football. Right. We're, we're capable of winning this game in terms of how we can play. Are we're they not playing good enough? Do you think they are? I think they have to play as close to a perfect game. I, I do think, that's why I said in the beginning, their margin for error is small in a game like this. But I think they are a good football team, good enough to win if they play their game. On first and ten, the fake DTN, Coney the linebacker, blitzing, and it pays off for Notre Dame. Jason Addy Miola is in there as well. Addy Miola is a true freshman, number 57. There's Coney here. He's been flirting with it. He shows blitz. Sometimes he comes, sometimes he doesn't. Runs right through ETN. That forces Trevor Lawrence to step up in the pocket. Good pressure that time. Heinish and Coney with the good play. A loss of seven. Off the hands of the tight end, Milan Richard. And that was very nearly disastrous for Clemson. Richard, the nephew of the great Herschel Walker. All kind of comes fluttering out of there, not typically what you see from Trevor Lawrence, a little bit high. And now third and long, and for Trevor Lawrence, take care of the football, make a good decision. The deep dig routes have been open on third down if Notre Dame chooses to, uh, to play zone. Lost from the pocket. Lawrence chased again by Ogun DJ, and he threw it away. Well, Khalid Kareem, who was out a play or two ago, back on the field, and part of the guy giving chase there, and a nice stop on third down. Todd, is there any psychology at work right now? We read all week, all month, we're leading up to the game. Notre Dame had a very rough recent history in BCS and New Year's Six Bowl games. Right. They've lost the last five, all of them one-sided, including that national championship game. This team has consistently said that's in the past. We weren't there for any of that. But is that a factor to overcome tonight psychologically for Notre Dame? I don't think it is because, like you said, it's a completely different team. I mean, they're being outplayed. And we said all along that Clemson and Alabama are clearly the two best teams in college football, and they're getting beat by a better team right now. 42-yard punt by Will Spires. Look at some of the moments from tonight's game through our AT&T pylon cameras. Cameras everywhere, 50 in all, as you mentioned earlier. Lots of toys for our producer, Phil Dean, our director, Scott Johnson, and our terrific crew, which we've been privileged to work all season, Todd. And I know you and Holly and Tom. Offense from the 74, five-yard penalty, still first down. All want to send our best wishes along to our great pal and such an important part of our group, Jim Birch, our operations producer He's at home recovering from some recent surgery and we are all certainly thinking of Jim here tonight yeah, nobody better than, uh, than Amen to that a rough start to this possession before they run a play a false start Dexter Williams gets that back and then some as he yeah. turns the left corner for 11 banged down by Isaiah Simmons and AJ Terrell well you see the speed of Dexter Williams on that play because the guy in pursuit Isaiah Simmons 
runs a 4-3 and covers a lot of ground with those long legs. And he was not able to, to get the right angle on Dexter Williams. He's the fastest player on their team. Yeah. And he's 6'2", 235 pounds. 40 and a half inch vertical. Buck running out of time. Threw it behind Dexter Williams. I'll tell you, the coverage downfield has been really good for Clemson in this game as well. I mean, there have not been guys running open. In, in, in the past, the two teams that flew for a lot of yards against Clemson, Texas A&M early in the year and then South Carolina late, there were some miscommunications, some guys out of position, giving up big plays, none of that today. They have really been in the right spots. Brent Venables has them dialed in correctly. Third down and four. They crowd the line of scrimmage. Williams trying to run through it. He does. Breaks the tackle. And gets stopped by J.D. Davis. But it's a first down for Notre Dame across midfield. Nice block by the left guard. Watch 69. Aaron Banks gets a block on Huggins. And Williams sits in right behind him. Tanner Muse, the safety, is unblocked. And he's not able to get Dexter Williams to the ground. Good tough run by number two. Time for Book, one of the few times today, and he's on target. Miles Boykin yanked down by Tanner Muse, and a gain of 20 for Notre Dame. Nice little combination route. Watch the tight end hold the corner, Terrell, and opens up a hole between the corner and the safety. And Ian Book gets the ball to Boykin. Boykin, the leading receiver in the game, his fourth catch now. Five-man rush. And Book again forced to take it down and scramble. He can't get away. Austin Bryant ran him down from behind. See, Clemson has so much depth on the defensive front. They start this possession with backup guys on the field. And now when they get in scoring territory, they bring their starters back. Austin Bryant beats two guys. I mean, that's a running back and a tight end. Austin Bryant beats them both and gets the sack behind the line of scrimmage. There's been no drop-off in the front of that Clemson defense without Dexter Lawrence suspended for today's game. They have won the battle against this Notre Dame line, and that continues. Book at the last minute tried to get rid of it as he got planted again by Austin Bryant, and the officials are talking about this. There's no foul for intentional grounding. The quarterback knee was on the ground prior to the pass. Third down. Now, Austin Bryant should not be coming free uh, on a rush. Brent Venables with a little uh, different look that time. And one of the best pass rushers on this team gets a free shot at the quarterback. And his knee is down before the ball's out of his hand. Clemson, true to who they've been, 15 times in this game, they've rushed more than four guys. They like to put pressure on the quarterback, especially on third down. And it is affecting Book noticeably more antsy than usual. His pass intercepted, picked off by Nolan Turner with some blockers and knocked down by Chris Fink at the 44-yard line. Now, Turner is the safety. He's going to be sitting right in here. It's only a three-man rush this time. So they're dropping eight. They don't pressure. They play zone. And Nolan Turner sitting in a safety spot with eyes on the quarterback. Read the and book. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Number seven of the defense removed his helmet while still in the field of play. 15-yard penalty from the dead ball spot. First down. That is the first career interception for That's Nolan Turner. Third down and long. Clemson expecting pass. Play before they blitz. That time they played zone and Turner with the big interception. He's the son of Kevin Turner. Played at Alabama. Was a teammate of Dabo Sweeney. Kevin Turner played 
in the NFL for the New England Patriots died of ALS and when he was near death Dabo Sweeney promised him he would take care of his son and Turner is in a great place to be surrounded by supportive and loving people at Clemson that's for certain Travis Etienne the ball carrier and Jameer Jones made the stop and what Notre Dame has to be aware of right now and guard against is defensively they're obviously a little fatigued a little frustrated this is when Travis Etienne has the ability to break a tackle and break a long run they've had him bottled up the whole game Lawrence ran very close to the line of scrimmage and in RPO the completion to DeAndre Overton near the first down here's Holly Rowe a huge development for this Clemson offense. Their leading receiver in this game, Justin Ross, has been in the injury tent for about five minutes. He came out of the game holding the back of his right knee. I also noticed that they have taped up his right ankle. He came out of the tent and has been trying to put some weight and pressure on it over on the sidelines with cap races and running. But also T. Higgins is over on the sideline trying to run out a little something right now, a little bit hobbled. So down two receivers at this moment. Play just short of the first down. Dabba won the penalty right in front of him for late hit. ETN explodes through the hole. One man with a chance to stop him, Jalen Elliott, and he will not. Touchdown, Clemson, 62 yards in a blur. Well, for whatever reason, their leading tackler, Tavon Coney, goes to the wrong spot. He's going here. Tranquil's going here. Nobody there. And all Travis Etienne needs is a little space, and he's got the speed to get it to the end zone. We've been saying it. He's a home run hitter. They've bottled him up, but not on that play. High snap, Will Sweeney got it down, and Greg Hugel knocked it through. Travis Etienne has now set the single season rushing record for Clemson. We'll tell you more about that when we come back. 30-3, to the Tigers with 2.04 to go in the third quarter. Single season school rushing record, 1,564 yards now for Travis Etienne. The previous mark was 1,527 by Wayne Gallman in 2015. His touchdown run, the longest play given up by Notre Dame this year. Here's Holly Rowe. Last year at this time, Travis Etienne was a freshman, and he was not at his best in that college football playoff semifinal. His offensive coordinator, Tony Elliott, met with him in January and said, look, man, you faded on me through the end of that season. You weren't mentally and physically prepared. And Travis admitted that that was true. So this year, he's dedicated himself much more to the weight room. He's been able to devote more time to being in shape, being mentally and physically prepared, and more importantly, protecting his quarterback and being on top of all the pass protection stuff. ETN, now the single-season record holder, he has not faded on Tony Elliott. Indeed, he has not. Breaks tackles, as you said, Holly blocks better, and Tony Elliott even joked with us that Travis now will walk into some meetings with a very <laughs> tight <laughs> shirt, kind of proud of the body yeah. that he constructed in the offseason in the weight room. Well, I think the other thing, and all that has definitely benefited him, but again, the way they rotate their backs, they keep him fresh. That was only his 12th carry in the football game. Dexter Williams up the middle for a first down, chopped down by Nolan Turner. ETN family here from not far away in Jennings, Louisiana. Yeah. Jennings. Yeah. Go ahead. Small town. There's Donetta. <laughs> Big part of her son's life. Great football fan. And a part of his decision to go to Clemson. He was the last player to, re to commit yeah. to his recruiting class to Clemson. He thought about it for a long time. I think Donetta, Donetta said that she thought there were going to be a hundred family members here. A lot of his family is from the Houston area. Jennings is a, a, a small town off of I-10 right between New Orleans and Houston. A lot of his supporters here and 
Again, his game against Alabama did not go well in the Sugar Bowl last year. Much different result for him. And Wellens just buried again. They have been dominated at the line of scrimmage, and right now, Notre Dame being dominated by backups. Xavier Thomas and Justin Foster, both second stringers. Xavier Thomas has so much suddenness. I mean, he's going to be the next one. When these guys go on to the NFL, he's going to be the next great pass rusher that they have. Very fast. One of the faster guys on the team, and he plays defensive line. If he stays a second stringer, would he be a second stringer on any other team <laughs> in the country? No, neither would Albert Huggins. I no. Mean, they've got guys that would be starting a lot of places. There comes a blitz after Book. He stands in, but had to get rid of it quickly. Jafar Armstrong. Simmons thought he took the ball away, but the officials blew the play dead at the 39-yard line. Well short of the first down by about 10 yards. Brent Venables, he, he wants every play. They have really played well today. Well schooled. He Ooh. does rip the ball Ooh. out. Is, is there any, mm. do they call forward progress? I mean, he's not down to the ground, but this is a great play by Simmons ripping the ball out. It might be another one of those excruciating developments for the fighting Irish, Brent Venables. Yeah. He says. can't advance the ball, but he certainly looks like he got possession of the football. I think we've seen a couple of examples why, and they'll bring you another replay review. Prior to the clock expiring, timeout Clemson. The first, second timeout of the half. Please reset the game clock to six seconds. Six seconds. There have been a lot of questions about why hasn't Brent Venable taken a head coaching job. He certainly had the opportunity to have several. And Dabo Sweeney said he is so competitive, Venable. That he's not going to go someplace where you're, you're going to lose at the beginning. Right. He can't stand to lose. He's been a Division One full-time assistant for 23 years. He's never had a losing yeah. season. Well, and I also read a quote from Brent. He said, look, I like a challenge as much as anybody, but I've got everything that I need, want, or desire in Clemson right now. He's, he's got a, a son on the a, football yeah, team. He's got a son he promised he'd stick around. He's got a younger son who is a junior who's already been offered a scholarship by Clemson. So, I mean, that that's a big part of the quality of life that means a lot to him and a lot of the coaches on this Clemson staff. Can we give you one more? That makes it an easy decision. Okay. He makes yeah. $2.2 .2 million <laughs> right. to be the defensive coordinator. Yeah, it's not like the ball. old days where guys took a head coaching job because the difference in the money made it necessary right. almost to take it. Uh, these assistant coaches, he's the second highest paid assistant in the country behind LSU's defense coordinator, Dave Aranda, who makes $2.5 million. And really, the whole coaching pool, money spent on assistants for Clemson is second only to LSU. So they pay all their assistants well, and Brent Venables one of the best paid in the country. And Dabo, every bit is competitive. They're going to keep the ball with Notre Dame. Let's bring in Bill Lamagne once again. Did they get that one right? Well, I'm going to tell you, he, I think he's going to challenge this one. That ball was out. There was no announcement about forward right. progress. But didn't hear any whistle blow or anything, no. right? But the, if, if the officials on the field were ruling that the runner was down which he wasn't. The ball was out and stole beforehand. It's challengeable, it's reviewable, and Clemson should have the football. The Clemson coach called timeout to challenge ruling on the field. Unfortunately, the ruling on the field was forward progress, which is not reviewable. Therefore, Clemson will not be charged with timeout. And that's the key to that. Yeah. If there was forward progress ruled by the official, replays out of the equation. I don't want to jinx it, Bill, but you're throwing a no-hitter. Oh, he's been unbelievable. Announcer women, yeah. and you are right on it today. I wish I could have done that when I was on the field, Sean. <laughs> so do a I lot of players and coaches there. and fans. Well, thank you. <laughs> the fans still booing. Tyler Newsom <laughs> waiting to punt. That was a big break from Notre Dame. That looked like a turnover for sure. Well, they were... Probably feeling like they were due to catch one. But as you said, you make your own breaks, and clearly Clemson has been the much better team today. As they started on the ready for play, they end the quarter before the punt snap. We'll be back with the fourth quarter of the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic right after these messages.
The National Championship Trophy presented by Dr. Pepper. It's in Miami tonight for the Capital One Orange Bowl coming up next. All four of these playoff teams have their sights set on taking that trophy home from Santa Clara a week from Monday night. Notre Dame's hopes fading fast. Down 33 as we go to the fourth quarter, and Tyler Newsom has had a tremendous game in what is likely his last game. Great hustle by Gilman. He couldn't save it. And what a career it's been for Tyler Newsom. We talked earlier, captain. Yeah. Got every vote from his teammates. Brian Kelly said no player's ever done that, and he's a punter who spends a lot of time by himself at practice. Spoke with Tyler the other day from Carrollton, Georgia, between Atlanta and Birmingham. Said he wasn't highly recruited in high school. As a matter of fact, he didn't punt until after his uh, junior or senior year in high school. He went to a couple of kicking camps. He paid his own way to go to Notre Dame. He said, I'd already been to four or five. My parents, I didn't want to ask them for money. I was a lifeguard. I had 150 bucks to my name. My aunt who worked for an airline got me a buddy pass. I went to the Atlanta airport to fly up there, and they told me I wasn't going to get on the plane. They didn't have any seats. Here's Adam Choice with a long run. Said I was walking away from the gate. They called me at the last minute. Come on, we have a opportunity for you. We have a seat. They so went to Notre Dame. He competed in their camp, paid his hundred and fifty dollars to go to the camp yeah. out of his own pocket. They picked four punters to kick in front of Brian Kelly. He was not one of them. Tavian Feaster, the running back now. Long throw by Trevor Lawrence and almost a one-handed catch made. So Newsom thought, uh, that's it. I'm not going to get an opportunity at Notre Dame. And Bob Elliott, longtime member of the Notre Dame staff, grabbed him and said, you know what? You're really good. I love your leg. I'm going to get you in front of Brian yeah. Kelly. And Brian came out of his office, watched him punt, and said, wow. And he said, coach, I've never punted in a game in my life. He said, I don't care. We've seen enough. We're going to give you a scholarship. Almost didn't get on the plane. Almost didn't get in front of Brian Kelly. Will leave as one of the great punters in school history. And a captain. And a captain. And deservedly so. He is a very impressive young man. Deep down the depth chart now, Holly mentioned some injuries and with a big lead, no reason to push it. So it's TJ Chase with the catch and run. Redshirt sophomore from Plant City, Florida, just his 11th catch of the year. One thing that Davo Sweeney really tries to do in any game is play a lot of guys. They really believe that's one of the strengths of their team is their depth on both sides of the ball and it keeps guys engaged. Yeah, they basically rotate in and out at wide receiver. Yeah. You and I were talking during the Syracuse Clemson game. You know, they're trying to battle back and they had a lot of big plays with Justin Ross is on the side. Most other teams in the country, he's in for every play. But they have such talent and depth that they can stick to the rotations and keep people fresh. And it paid off for them in that game. Yeah. Absolutely. They kind of wore Syracuse out on a warm day. And they're on the move again. Tavian Feaster. Well, and I think part of that culture that we talked about with Davos Winnie and Clemson, that part of that is guys know they're going to get a chance to play. If they do the right thing, if they work hard, if they're right in the classroom, they work hard in practice, they're going to get onto the field. And a lot of times with that position at wide receiver, what you see is you have certain guys in on running plays and you bring your studs in on passing mm -hmm. plays. And he doesn't do that. I mean, he was a former walk-on wide receiver himself. He knows that route. And uh, those guys all get in on whatever the play is. Injured Notre Dame player, Adekumbo Ogundeje. Timeout. They're on the field warming up now down in South Florida for the Capital One Orange Bowl. And... All eyes on Tua Tunga Valoa. How is he moving around on that injured ankle? Warm up shots we've seen make it look like he is moving well, getting ready to take on Oklahoma for the kickoff at 8 10 Eastern Time. So we're under an hour away. On third down and two, Tavian Feaster, first down and more for Clemson. 
Dragged down by Drew Tranquil. Here's Holly Rowe. Well, Maria Taylor, who will be covering Alabama in that next game, said that the athletic trainer Jeff Allen said the problem with Tua injuring his left ankle and being a left-handed quarterback is he has to generate power and rotation with his left leg. The rotation was bothering Tua at first, but he said after last Wednesday's practice, it's finally coming back and his lateral movement is getting much better. Yeah, my only concern would be not him planting or throwing because I think he's progressed with that. What's it going to be like the first time he gets hit or the first time he gets hit low on that left leg in the game? That, that'll be interesting to watch tonight. TJ Chase taken down by Jalen uh, Elliott. And one of the stories of the year was Jalen Hurts. Riding it out after losing his starting job at 26-2. and two. I thought it was the best there, and I thought it was the best story. I thought it was the best story in college football this season. I really did. I mean, in the same stadium that he lost it, <laughs> eleven months later, he's back on the stage to, to win the game for his team. Mercedes Benz Stadium. To a tongue of a lower led the comeback in the national championship at the end of last season. Jalen Hurts brought them back against Georgia in the SEC title game. Beaster stopped at the twenty yard line by Jonathan Bonner. You know, this is probably the last possession we will see the starting offensive line for Clemson. I really want to tip my hat to them because as I've watched them this year, and this is the fourth year in a row Clemson's been in the playoffs, this is the best offensive line they've had of any of their playoff teams. They've always had great skill guys, but this is the most physical group up front that they've had, and uh, they have kind of controlled things here in the second half. Low throw by Lawrence and cost him the first down. Travion Thompson, the catch. We spoke with Tony Elliott uh, yesterday, or Thursday, I guess it was. He said, we really became a legitimate national championship contending team when the offensive line yeah. improved. But that was the thing that was really holding us back. Yeah. Now they're a strength. Started with that. And they got elite quarterback play for a couple years with Deshaun Watson. And... Of course, now Trevor Lawrence kind of taking over that mantle. Kelly Bryant got them to the playoffs last year. Fourth down and one. Clemson going for it. And ETN bounced off the pile. Looked like he'd be stopped short. Where he was able to move forward for the first down. Uh, this is what makes him a different runner. Watch this play. He's just going to get hit right at the point of attack. But if you don't wrap him up, he's a different runner. Much more lower body strength than he had a year ago. Average four yards after contact per carry this season. Just a more physical runner and uh, runs much stronger. When you see him in person, you say, boy, he's not very big. But he looks big on film, and he runs big on the field. They flip it to Will Sweeney, one of Dabble and Kathleen's children. Tavon Tony made the tackle. See, I wonder if that's like Tony Elliott saying, "Okay, this one's for you, coach. <laughs> Maybe a raise at the end of this uh, at the end of this season." We well, asked Tony <laughs> Elliott the other day, "How involved is Dabo?" Because every now and then you see him looking at the play sheet, offering opinions. So, well, he lets me call the play, but he does offer opinions, and he's my boss, and I like to keep the boss happy. So a lot of times I act upon his opinions and suggestions. Well, Davos had a huge impact on Tony Elliott. Former wide receiver, walk-on, ball in the air. ETN fumbles and caught out of the air by Asmar Bilal. And that's the first Clemson turnover of the game. I think it was Gilman that knocked it out, number 11. Coming in there late, knocks it out. And Bilal catches it out of the air, and they... Turnover forced by the Notre Dame defense. The Goodyear Cut and Roll Classic. Brought to you by Goodyear. Hardworking tires that deliver blimp-worthy performance. AT&T. More for your thing. That's our thing. And Ford. Built Ford Proud. Nighttime in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. When you put in the hours, the reps, and the heart, nothing can keep you from being blimp-worthy. Goodyear, more driven. Huge first half for Justin Ross. 
He's been a spectator here in the second half, and Ian Book is buried by Shaq Smith. Listed as a third string linebacker for Clemson, redshirt sophomore from Baltimore. Well, he's got fresh legs. Watch him just run right over Dexter Williams. Dexter Williams trying to pass protect, gets run over. All backups in the game now for Clemson's defense that has dominated the action. Play a design quarterback draw for Ian Book. He's taken a lot of shots today, been pressured throughout, and is fighting valiantly. His predecessor at quarterback, Brandon Wombush, has been reported to be transferring. Brian Kelly confirmed that to us yesterday. Played with great distinction for Notre Dame, and Brian Kelly said he will always fondly be remembered at Notre Dame, what he did both on and off the field, and he has a year of eligibility left, and he did not disclose where he is going. Brian Kelly says he does know where Winbush is going, so apparently that decision has been made. We've heard rumors, but we're not really in the business of repeating rumors. If you want to, though, go ahead. No, I will not. <laughs> Now, we do know that Kelly Bryant has made his decision to go to Missouri. Brandon mm -hmm. Wimbush will end up somewhere. Jalen Hurts will end up somewhere in all likelihood next year. Fourth down conversion. Dexter Williams. You know, this Clemson defense, again, we're seeing a lot of backups rotating through there, but coming into the game, led the nation in yards per carry, run defense. They held nine opponents to under 300 yards of total offense. This is about to be the 10th, the way things are going. Seven opponents under 100 yards rushing. Notre Dame sitting there with 90 yards rushing right now. And three points the Irish have on the board. That would be their fewest ever in a bowl game. This is officially their 35th bowl game. If it stays this way, but they have depth. They have so many players who are yeah. second and third stringers. I mean, Albert Huggins, who got a lot of attention because he was moving in for Dexter Lawrence today, and they're the numbers that we were talking about. The previous low in a bowl game for Notre Dame, six points twice. Both sidestep the rush and throws it away. Albert Huggins, as you said earlier, he's going to be drafted even though he doesn't start. He plays behind two All-Americans. He was the South Carolina State Player of the Year when he was in high school. Yeah. Yeah, highly, highly recruited guy, highly touted, came to Clemson, knew there'd be competition, and, uh, you know, has had to kind of wait his turn. Now, here's the deal. Even though he's a backup, he's played a lot of snaps because he would rotate in with Dexter Lawrence. Dexter's a guy that would come in on rundowns, and they keep both of those guys fresh. So Dexter averaged 36 snaps a game. Albert Huggins averaged 20 snaps a game. High throw by Buck off the hands of Claypool. Xavier Thomas, the freshman you mentioned, he's a backup. Yeah. He was the number four ranked player in the country at any position coming out of high school last year out of Florence, South Carolina. You and I, and you're going to have to help me with the name, we did the West Virginia game. They have a defensive yeah. lineman who's a graduate transfer for one year at West Virginia. <laughs> and Tony Gibson, the defensive coordinator, said, yeah, he's a transfer from Clemson. He was the fifth defensive lineman at Clemson, which means he's about the 12th best defensive <laughs> lineman in the country. He was sure good for them. I mean, he was a good fit for West Virginia, that's for sure. Whistles before the punt by Newsom. Part of the snap, false start. Offense number 21, five-yard penalty, still fourth down. Brian Polian, the special teams coach. Please reset the game. Well, the best in the country, former head coach at Nevada. He'll get another opportunity. We heard through the grapevine that he turned down one this offseason. Son of the great Bill Polian, NFL Hall of Famer, builder of several terrific teams in the NFL. And our much loved and respected colleague at ESPN. Jabril Robinson is the guy we were thinking about. You're the left best. Clemson and went to West Virginia. You're the best, but the internet is probably better. <laughs> Faster.
Monday, January 7th, don't miss the college football playoff national championship game presented by AT&T from Levi Stadium in Santa Clara, California. It comes your way at 8 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN. Halftime featuring Imagine Dragons, one of Todd's favorites I know. Yeah. We'll be there providing the commentary for ESPN Radio. So if you're uh, out and about and not watching it on the ESPN app, we hope you'll tune in to your local ESPN radio affiliate all over the country and beyond. Lynn J. Dixon was the ball carrier, his first carry. Here's Chase Bryce. When the story of this season is written, whether or not they win a national championship, he will be mentioned prominently. The starter, you're the third string quarterback. Came in in relief of Trevor Lawrence in the fifth game of the year against Syracuse and rescued the Tigers when it looked like they were about to go down to defeat. He gives it to Dixon, who can fly. Yeah, we were there. Trevor Lawrence started the game and was injured. So they were down in the final three minutes. He threw a bullet for 20 yards on fourth down and six under three minutes to go to keep the drive going. Ran for 17 yards, and then Travis Etienne tapped what really was a championship caliber drive. They went 94 yards in 13 plays to come from behind. They were down by 10 in the late stages. They're against the team at the time, I think, people didn't realize how good Syracuse was. Julian Love out there breaking up the play to DeAndre Overton. That was the week they made the quarterback That's change, right. and Kelly Bryant, when he heard the news he was being replaced as a starter, left the program. It was a lot of turmoil. Yeah. And Lawrence got hurt late in the first half. Bryce, a little shaky, understandably so, when he yes. first got in, uh, found himself at the big moment. Yeah, he made a couple of huge plays down the stretch, and really that was the turning point for this Clemson team because the next time we saw them a few le weeks later against NC State, Trevor Lawrence was back. He was fully established. All the drama was gone, and that team just started to take off and started to play offensively at a whole new level. Defensively, they had been the same all year. Offensively, they went to a whole new level, but they don't get to this point without what Chase Bryce did in the fourth quarter of that Syracuse game. Everybody around the program knows that Tim Bure, longtime SID, Clemson historian, still involved very closely in the program, said without question that was the player of the year. We talked to Hunter Renfro. He said, in recent years, even with the success, that's a game we lose. We lost to Syracuse right. last year. We lost to Pittsburgh the year before. So uh, who knows if they had one loss this year, if they would have gotten into the college football playoff. Aloe Gilman, who's battled all day, broke up the pass for DeAndre Overton. Here's Holly Rowe. Well, Sean, you're talking about that game against Syracuse, and I saw something in that game that I think was the defining moment of this Clemson season. Is They were down. As you said, Chase Bryce had come in three and out, three and out. They were struggling. And in that moment, a senior on this team, the seniors are 53 and four, and it was Christian Wilkins who came down to the offense that was struggling and said, lean on us, meaning lean on the defense. We've got you. We can support you. They created turnovers. They limited Dungey in that second half and allowed Chase Bryce to come in and have that game. These senior leaders saved that season. Good punt by Will Spires. And excellent coverage as well. Trayvon Mullen right there on the catch. Back with more from the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic after these messages. Time for tonight's AT&T's giving their best. Well, a couple guys, Cleveland Furl and Austin Bryant, who picked up the slack in the absence of Dexter Lawrence. A lot of attention paid to Christian Wilkins on the inside, but these two outside rushers really had their way with the tackles and the tight end of Notre Dame, pressuring Ian Book, forcing him out of the pocket several times today, holding this Notre Dame offense to 235 total yards. Austin Bryant, Cleveland Farrell. Farrell, both guys that will be drafted in the NFL draft upcoming in the spring and uh, making the most of their senior season. 15-yard completion booked to Boykin. Gets Notre Dame out to the 26 and now still doing their best. That defensive front. Justin Foster. With Pearl now watching from the sideline, even without Dexter Lawrence, they are still the best defensive line in the country. You know, there's Christian Wilkins talking to Dexter Lawrence. No greater leader on this football team than 
than Christian Wilkins. And just, we were talking about Chase Bryce and talking about the quarterback change to Trevor Lawrence and that week that we were there. And one story that we found out about that I think is one of the greatest stories about Christian Wilkins is Thursday of that week, after Kelly Bryant had made his decision and left the team, Christian Wilkins took Trevor Lawrence to breakfast and just wanted to just kind of see where his head was, make sure he was okay. And he felt comfortable that Trevor was in a good place. And for Trevor, it was such a confidence thing for him knowing that, okay, this guy's got my back, you know, and, and, and the defense is behind me and, and the change. And, uh, and again, after that game, this team took off and, and achieved new heights. And Dabo Sweeney says, this is the best team that I've coached ever at Clemson. And it really turned for the better after that Clemson game. Great leadership. Pass incomplete after the pass to Wisher was broken up by Nolan Turner. That one for Dexter Williams. A lot of great leaders. Dabo said 26 different players got votes for captain. But without question, the leader on the team is Christian Wilkins who earlier this month received the William Campbell Trophy in New York City at the annual National Football Foundation Banquet. It's a combination of football skills and academic achievement. He graduated in two and a half years. He's a three-time All-American. Drew Tranquil of Notre Dame was a finalist for that award. And he said when he met Wilkins in New York City, he couldn't believe how impressive he was. Yeah. He said you know, he's a superstar, but he is as regular and down-to-earth a person as you'd ever come across. From Springfield, Massachusetts, overcome a lot of adversity in his life, including the uh, shooting death of his grandfather in an accident. He is a very impressive young man. And they're going on to play for a national championship. That's why he and Bryant and Pearl all decided yeah. to come back when all three of them could have left. The Clemson fans like in the Taco Bell Live Moss student section. And very cool to see not only did they come back and, and it pay off in the success, but they all stayed healthy. They played every game. Uh, it's just, just a great story. And, and I don't think there's anybody, and Davos Sweeney told us this, nobody that epitomizes a student athlete and maximizing the experience of being a college football player like Christian Wilkins. Everything that he's been a part of on the field, off the field, the substitute teacher in the kindergarten class, did a little bit of everything during his time at Clemson and built wonderful relationships. Darian Rencher had a carry. Lynn J. Dixon, the ball carrier. And that goes back to what we were talking about, the culture. Yeah. You know, a lot of times coaches try to give us spin in our meetings. They talk about we're establishing this, that, and the other thing. But when you go to Clemson, we've been there several times now. Yeah. It's real. It is it's real. And it starts with this man yeah. who became the head coach 10 years ago. A lot of Clemson fans didn't like it. His name, the interim coach. After six games, 2008 season took over for Tommy Bowden. Had never even been a coordinator. It was the wide receiver coach. Terry Don Phillips, the athletic director, believed in him, and that belief has been rewarded big time. Chase Bryce, a long and tough run of 18 yards, and the Clemson fans still here loving it. There's very little green still in the seats here in Arlington. Well, we talk about Trevor Lawrence, but this guy was a highly recruited, highly regarded kid coming out of high school too, Chase Bryce. Redshirt freshman played at Grayson High School in Grayson, Georgia. He won a state championship there as well. Drew Sweeney is on the field. Number 81, he has been. Bryce runs again. He's the other football playing son of Coach Sweeney. Tony Elliott might want to Get him a catch if he really wants to. Add somebody to the touch chart, right? <laughs> Drew's back on the sideline now. Dabo Sweeney said he owes so much of his success to the great Gene Stallings, who was his coach at Alabama. Gave him a chance. Dabo was a walk-on, overcame some very difficult times of his own as he was growing up. Gene Stallings put him on scholarship. He said, that was huge for me. And then when Dabo graduated, he had a job in the hospital administration world. Had no interest in coaching. He said, I just went by spring practice one day. 
team was out there and Coach Stallings came over and said, Dabo, you should get a master's degree. I have a graduate assistantship. You'll start in July. Dabo said, well, they're getting assistant coaches with the Gatorade. <laughs> Dabo said, Coach, no thanks. I have a great job, 35000 I'm about to get married, start what I want to do. And Gene Stallings said, Dabo, I don't think you heard me. You need a master's degree. I have a job for you. You will start in July. And he said, I couldn't say no to Gene Stallings. And a career was launched. He said, after a week as a coach, I knew I wanted to coach. And he's becoming one of the all-time greats. He's out running the Gatorade right now. <laughs> He'll have a chance to earn his second national championship as head coach. And the third in school history, the Gatorade bucket with more than 10 seconds to go. And Dabo Sweeney is with Holly Rowe as Clemson wins the Cotton Bowl Classic to head on to the national title game. Well, Coach Sweeney, you just about outran the Gatorade, but you didn't. How was that bad? That might be the coldest ever. Uh, but it was sweet. It was sweet. I'm, I'm really proud of our team. Appreciate our fans. It was an amazing environment. Uh, congratulations to Notre Dame. What an incredible year they had. But, man, I'm going to tell you what, guys, they got it done in the trenches. We kind of hung in there. We finally got a little run game going. But but the big plays on offense, the sacks on defense, created a couple turnovers. Big play by Nolan Turner here in the in the second half. But, man, I, I just – this is what we came here to do. And, uh, you know, this senior group just won their 40, 54th game. And uh, they're going back to their third national championship in four years. And, man, we're so excited to have the opportunity to go to California, represent the ACC, and, and play another great opponent. But we're going to celebrate this tonight. All the glory to God, no doubt about it. This is just, it's just, it's almost unbelievable. But we did it, and we're here, and uh, proud of my guys. You did it. You had adversity. You know, you lose Dexter Lawrence. How did your team absorb that? You have so much depth on that defensive line. How did they absorb that big loss? Well, we're, we're, we're not about individual here at Clemson, all right? I mean, it, you know, we're bigger than any coach. Uh, we're bigger than any player. And uh, players come and go, coaches come and go, but our, our culture, it stays the same. And uh, we've got a lot of good players. And, you know, we just treated it as an injury. Really, obviously, disappointing for, for Dexter that he didn't get a chance to be a part of this, and Zach, and Braden. But um, hey, Big Huggy did a great job, and Niles and Jordan, I don't know how many sacks we had, but we were able to get the type of pressure we need. We stopped the run game and uh, just made them uncomfortable all night. And we bent a little bit, but we kept them out of the end zone. And then our guys just made some great plays. And number 16, Trevor Lawrence, was the, the moment wasn't too big for him. Uh, he, he had a heck of a game. And, and uh, I thought Justin Ross was the spark early in the game that got us going. And, and we put it together in the second half. Coach, you made a tough decision midseason about number 16, Trevor Lawrence. In hindsight, how has that paid off for your team now? Well, it was a hard decision in, in that because you, you love – I love my guys, and it's hard when you know that, that it's the right thing and, it, and there's going to be some disappointment. But, uh, you know, that's, that's that's my job is to give the team the best chance to, to win. And, uh, you know, we're going back to the national championship. We're 14-0, and 0, and uh, – we, we wouldn't be where we are without number 16. He, he's had an amazing year, but he's got an unbelievable supporting cast around him, starting with that offensive line. And he is standing by with Tom Rinaldi right now. Thank you, Coach. You got it. <laughs> Holly, thank you very much. The aforementioned number 16. We were chatting just a moment ago, Trevor. Nothing ever seems too big for you. A year ago, you're watching this game on television, getting ready to play in an All-American high school game. What was the moment where you felt like, I belong and I've arrived in this game on this stage. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think even before the game, I, I knew I belonged and I thought I belonged. But I would say the one moment we really picked it up and got rolling as far as we had a throw to Justin Ross down the seam, first big throw. I would say that's when we started we started rolling. This was a tight game in the first quarter, and then what was the turning point in the second quarter that ignited this offense? Yeah, I mean, I think in any big game, you have so, especially this one, you have so much time to prepare. And they did, they did some good stuff. They played really hard. Uh, they, they, they battled the whole time, but they came out with some stuff. Just had to make adjustments, you know. I think that's, in games like this, you gotta make adjustments, and that's, and that's something we did really well. When you go back to September, and you think about Dabo Sweeney naming you the starter full time, how do you compare then to this moment? One game away from the national championship. Man, came a long way, but, uh, but still the same group of guys. 
you know, just from that point, I mean, same thing. So it's just it's cool to see how everyone's grown and uh, to kind of see how this season's gone. It's been awesome. Finally, a moment ago, you looked up and you said, where's the confetti? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Well, I thought I thought you won this one. There's a confetti. It's a bowl game, so I didn't know. But we'll have to wait till next week. So next one. That's when the confetti flies. Well done, Trap. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go back to Holly. Well, I'm over here with Christian Wilkins, one of those seniors. 54 wins for this senior class. Why do you think this group has been so special? Hey, just because um, you know, well, we got great leadership on the team. Um, you know, we got a lot of seniors who've been here four or five years. Who set the tone each and every day? Who set the standard? You know, when they come onto the practice field, around the facility, just putting they all into the all, all into the program. Um, you know, and I'm just honored, you know, to be a part of this. It's really special. I mean, we got 54 wins. I want to go get 55 next week in Cali. All right, we'll see you there. Thank, right, thank you, you. Yep. thank you, John. Well, tremendous performance. They held Notre Dame to 248 yards of offense, even without Dexter Lawrence. Here in the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic, and you know it's revisionist history now. Certainly, <laughs> senseless to debate it. But I think the questions about whether Notre Dame deserved to be in the Final Four now, yeah. those who said they shouldn't have been, that'll fire up again. Their dreadful bowl history continues. I'm surprised. I thought they would be much more competitive yeah. than they were today. Well, I thought they would be too. The first quarter they were. They held Clemson to 45 yards, but then. Once Clemson made the adjustment and said, okay, we're just going to start throwing the football, they hit them with some big plays, and, and Notre Dame just had no response. And But I think if you look at Clemson, and, and we saw them, this is the third time we've seen them this year, in September, I thought with the quarterback uncertainty and the way Tua was playing that Alabama was clearly the best team in college football. And then through October, November, I thought – Clemson started to close that gap. I thought clearly then those were the two best. Right now, I don't think there's much of anything that separates Alabama and Clemson. I think they are clearly the two best teams in college football. And I agree Trevor with Lawrence that. makes the difference. Although I do think Kyler Murray is yes. a dangerous enough difference yep. maker that he can give Oklahoma a chance tonight. Trevor Lawrence threw for 327 yards and three touchdowns in this Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic. Reese Davis, Desmond Howard, David Pollock standing by with the TurboTax live college football pregame show from the Capital One Orange Bowl. And the game right after that. It's all coming up after these messages. You can watch the Cotton Bowl trophy presentation on the ESPN. For Todd Black with Holly Rowe, Tom Rinaldi and our great crew, Sean McDonough, so long from Arlington, Texas.